Hi, everybody, and welcome to Game Session. I'm the Seth Rokage, or Jose, or whatever the hell you want to call me. I don't really care. And uh, just at the top of the show, how is everybody doing? Sarah? Doing great. Uh, I'm good. M- Mesa's ghost is with us. <laughs> <laughs> he tested it earlier in the week, too, and everything. I'm terrified because this thing was like six, seven hundred dollars. So, oh, ouch! Are you still in the warranty? Are you still in the warranty? Yes. Is that no? No. Very much no. Oh, Very no. much no. Fuck. Uh, All right. Anyway, at the, at the top, I just want to go and remind everyone watching to uh, subscribe and follow on all the socials, whether that's YouTube. You can find all my stuff at the Seth Rokage and everyone else's ads are on the screen. Um, so, yeah, today I brought together a panel of speakers and I based that decision on who was going to come on based on who knows the most about the industry. So I just want. So let's go ahead and get into what everyone's perception of the next generation of consoles are. Uh, but first, I guess let's just kind of introduce how we know each other. Uh, Sarah, I met through uh, me, Sarah, and Corey went to SFSU to study film. <laughs> so Sarah and I had uh, we had all the introductory film courses together, but we didn't really okay. talk. I think no, until we uh, one of them. I, va- I, them. I vaguely remember, but I don't think we like really started talking until um, the uh, the gothic horror class. And then once the teacher yeah. busted out Silent Hill, it, it, it was, was just like, oh, fucking done. Gone. Oh, hope your gone. teacher busted out Silent Hill. Yeah, it was the HD collection, though. Oh. I mean, it was still like mm. she was still like she brought in this like fat PlayStation three to class every Friday. I was actually re- you. You were game. you were probably more annoyed than me because you know we're at a art school. People are supposed to be open minded, but then you got a bunch of chuds in class going like, "Ew, video game! Ew, what the fuck literally. is that?" Oh my gosh! Wait, literally. really? Wow! Yeah, yeah. There were like people who were like, "What is this? Why is this so slow? Why does this look so bad?" And like him and I were just like in the corner, just oh, just like Jesus. I'd be fuming. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, and. Was- uh, it was it was a lot. <laughs> was, yeah, I'm I'm sad on two occasions. One, the fact that I was not a part of that conversation because I love Silent Hill with the bottom of my deformed heart. Um, and two, <laughs> two, um, what Jose said is exactly right. Um, there were so many people there that weren't gamers, and it was painfully obvious. So, <laughs> yeah, that's all I'm going to say. <laughs> and uh, me and Corey met. I think we only had the one class together. I even forget what the name of it was. It was we like a, a few, we had a few, few classes together over the semesters, but I don't think we actually got to talking. And uh, what, what was the teacher's name? Something with a J and it was like a weird experimental class. It was like an experimental film class in a way, but it was like experimental in like different mediums of film. Right. There's like a transmedia project. Um, there's an interactive. And I remember uh, your work always stood out to me just because you like instantly gravitated toward, towards towards uh, let, let's implement some of the aspects of video games into this. Like what <laughs> what inherentness of that makes it stand out versus, you know, just regular films. Yep. Yeah, so that was, um, I actually really liked that class, but I felt like my production value could have been infinitely better. Yeah. And, and it wasn't until one of the, my, actually, no, it was the last class I ever took was, uh, it was an After Effects class, and I went completely stupid over the top with, uh, I need to look up the name of this real quick. I'll, I'll do it while Mace is talking. Yeah. <laughs> it was like Trump anime waifu dating simulator. Yes, I remember I saw that. That, it, was beautiful. that, that was the last thing I ever turned in for oh, college. Wow. And it was it was fucking ridiculous. But uh, yeah, so moving on to Mesa, me and Mesa were up until like a month ago, co-workers at a small uh, news channel. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, no kidding. Locally. Um, yeah, uh, we both started around the same time. Uh, I'm still there. <laughs> I am so sorry oh. for dipping out when I did. I oh, apologize. I'm so tired. <laughs> I, I low key slept for like 14 hours today. Jeez. Damn, I don't oh blame God. you. <laughs> so yeah. so like 11 p.m. to like three. Hmm? Yeah. So Mesa is the pretty much the new the new person, yeah. the new connection, the new. I'm connection. the one no one knows, and yep. I know nobody. <laughs> Hello. And I camera doesn't work. That's just it's just all 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 falls together. 
Oh, uh, Salty Skeleton says, if possible, go ahead uh, to turn your audio up. Otherwise, I can do it on my end. Uh, I, I can boost it on my end, and I'll just monitor everyone else as they talk. Thanks, Salty. All right. Thank uh, you. Let's see. Where were we? Da, da, da. <laughs> Killing time by making random noises. <laughs> uh, okay. So as you all know, the uh, next generations of consoles is launching this November with the new Microsoft and Sony too. consoles. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so there's there's generally a lot to, a lot here to discuss today, and hopefully we don't go on too long. Even though I already know uh, specific people, not naming names and uh, any. What, you can how just do I point? Me, it's fine. Yeah. <laughs> specific people are going to go on on uh, on very long diatribes about certain games. Um, so it's, yeah, today we're just going to be discussing what we've done for this current generation, what consoles we plan on getting, proper time to upgrade, exclusive services, um, what specific models to get, uh, increased pricing, and more. Um, but before we get into that, I just want to give everyone the floor to go ahead and um, just kind of introduce their gaming backgrounds. And uh, I, I'll try to keep mine very short because I would imagine most of the people here kind of already know me. Um, so yeah, as I said, up until recently, I was a media production assistant at a news channel, but most people kind of know me as I've done a couple video game essays, uh, video essays over on YouTube, uh, focused mostly on game design and reviews. Um, I'm also getting obviously back into uh, streaming on Twitch and I just had a, the idea to throw this podcast together with some video production thrown in there as well. I grew up with, um, Super Nintendo in the house. Oh, no, I had an NES too, but I don't really have any memories playing it. Uh, so, grip with Super Nintendo, N64, PlayStation. I was always basically a Sony Nintendo kid up until the seventh gen. So, I've got a, I have a, I definitely have a, a big place in my heart for platformers and JRPGs. I blame that for me not liking CRPGs whatsoever nowadays. Um, seventh gen, I went with the Xbox, and that's probably like the peak of my interest in multiplayer games with Halo 3 and Gears of War. But nowadays, I'm pretty platform agnostic. I, I don't care for console wars or anything like that. And that's about it for me. Uh, Sarah, if you want to go ahead. Hi, as he said, that is that is my name, Down down here. Uh, a lot of you probably know me from my time on uh, SDGC for a couple of weeks ago and also recently on a stream that they just held. Um, I'm getting into the podcast stuff, but I run a blog called Out Here in This Open Space where I talk about uh, gaming, mental health in gaming and accessibility in, in gaming as well, because uh, that's just something I'm extremely passionate about. Uh, I started with a, I grew up around a PlayStation and a Sega Dreamcast. So I remember the PlayStation a lot better. Uh, stuff like uh, Tony, Tony Hawk, Crash, Spyro. Uh, I guess I played Twisted Metal at one point when I was a kid. So that kind of like grew into what I enjoy now, which is over the top crazy stuff. Uh, when it came to the Xbox 360 and the PS3, I got a PS3 first. So I pretty much, I jumped into the like super cin cinematic stuff. So um, so Uncharted, uh, Infamous, stuff like that was how I grew into, like what I'm mostly in the game now, which I'm in for, for the cinematic. Uh, but I like I basically play everything on the on the spectrum, everything from uh, Atome dating sims to uh, World of Warcraft. I, I'm, I'm a big Gears player also, so that's on my Xbox side. But I'm pretty console ag ag agnostic, same as uh, same as you are. I just I play on everything and anything, so. Awesome. I, I completely forgot to mention anything specific, but uh, I think most people know I'm a freaking diehard for uh, Resident Evil specifically. I think that's kind of what we bonded together over initially. Yes. And uh, fuck, my camera can't see it, but I got my little uh, Monokuma from Danganronpa hanging out out there. All right, uh, Mesa, go ahead. All right. <clears throat> so um, for me, um, you know, I'm. When I was much younger, I was I was pretty much all Nintendo just because uh, you know we didn't have much money and um, uh, that was just a that was just what was my my, my earliest memories of playing like Mario sixty four Ocarina of Time and Smash on the original N sixty four and you know as time grew up it took me forever to start getting more consoles like um, so I. I 
so for pretty much my entire gaming life, I've been uh, Nintendo with, you know, being able to view other games online. Um, so this generation is actually the first I have. I have everything, finally. <laughs> it was like childhood dream, I have everything. Um, though I'm, 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 I'm pretty console agnostic, despite being a, uh, a Nintendo drone. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, for me, That's like, kidding. yeah, Mario, Zelda, uh, the Batman series, like the Arkham series is uh, pretty high on my list. Um, yeah, I'm just excited to, oh, I, of course, PC as well. I'm, I've gotten really into computers and computer parts and how they work and how much they are and what what's good for what. So I've been like looking really closely at this next generation what 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 their architectures are how how that's going to help them how it's going to hinder them so yeah i'm just been been learning and pretty good i think you're being a little bit too humble because you completely <laughs> forgot to mention that you're a what? fucking wizard at video production and that uh you're, you're fucking that. You're, you're a wizard at that you know how to build computers like nobody's business and uh you're pretty damn good at fighting games Oh yeah, I did forget. <laughs> you hell forgot. That's your thing. Like fighting it is my thing. I was ready to say it and everything. I just completely blanked. Yeah, That's I love, kind of a big I, deal. <laughs> I, I like fighting games. Um, you know, in fact, like when we were setting up, there was the Tekken announcements that got me. I was pretty excited about what was said there. Um, yeah, right now, I mainly play Street Fighter right now, but uh, I, I like most, if not all, fighting games. I used to go to locals when we had locals in the before time. Um, the before times. Yeah. But um but yeah, yeah, just it's just, 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 just that's just me. Cool. Guilty Gear player? Guilty Gear Guilty Gear is like the one of the few that I'm like I'm not, I don't no. really like I like, every, I like everything about it except exactly how it feels to press the button. See, like, I love how it plays. It's the only fighting game that I really got ever into. Like, I, like, own almost all the PlayStation 4 ones, and, like, that's, like, that's, like, my game is just that one. All right, moving on. Oh, Court. Well, yeah. <laughs> Damn, we haven't even talked about the consoles yet. I know. Uh, Corey. Go ahead and uh, give us your background. Yes, um, I'm Corey, also known as uh, Celtic Scribe right there. You can check me out. Um, I Where do I start? Um, I'm a published author uh, of two novels, um, both available on Amazon. Um, other than that, I write uh, short stories on my Twitch channel, um, and I turn those into audio stories for my YouTube. It's just a passion that I've had since I was a teenager. Along with that, I love video gaming and talking about video gaming. That's why I'm here. Um, <laughs> so when it comes to that, I think um, I have always been, well, I started with a Nintendo. I started with like an original Nintendo because my dad had the original Nintendo. And me and my brother would play the crud out of that. And then when we asked for a Nintendo, a Super Nintendo, uh, for Christmas, my dad's like, no, we're going to wait because, you know, obviously there's going to be something better that's going to come out right around the corner. And thus, like maybe a year or two later, the N64 came out. Um, Pokemon Snap was my jam. Um, and then I became a PlayStation fanboy um, and was pretty loyal uh through the ecosystem of, of, of PlayStation, it, it, besides the fact that we had an original Xbox and I eventually did get an Xbox 360. Now, as an adult, I have everything. So I'm pretty agnostic myself as, as far as uh, the gaming sphere. Um, because although I will say this, I have an Xbox One, but I don't use it at all. It's not even plugged in. Um, and I think that's not, the case for most of us. <laughs> it's uh, not because <laughs> I. It's not because I hate the Xbox or anything. I actually really like the Xbox interface, um, and it's very user friendly. But um, I have a gaming PC, and usually, the, because it's Microsoft, you can get most, if not all, of their games on PC that you could get on an Xbox. So. I'm if I have to choose, I'm I'm loyal to to PlayStation because of the exclusives, and I also have a Switch because of exclusives. So, but yeah, otherwise, if I have to pick a game, Kingdom Hearts is my jam as well. 
Um, <laughs> you and me are going to have to fight over that, dude. I, I have fa- I, I have fallen so out of love with Kingdom Hearts. Oh I know, I know, I know the reasons. We're going to talk about it. I know the reasons that you're going to bring up, and I still, I my heart bleeds. My heart bleeds darkness. <laughs> you know, it just <laughs> darkness hearts. But I thought Kingdom Hearts was light, man. Oh, friendship. It is. It is. <laughs> But it's also darkness. They're one and the same. <laughs> Sora, Donald, and Goofy. <laughs> All right, so moving on. Let's just uh, so we've got a list here of like specific topics, but so many of them are are so intermingled with one another. Or we'll just we're just going to kind of fluidly jump between them. So, uh, just any general thoughts on next gen whatsoever <laughs> for whoever wants to take that. Um. I think we're, I think we're in for a grand, grandiose treat. I think mm-hmm. it's a upgrade in and step into the right direction. Um, I think it's it's needed in terms of relief for people with the situation that the entire yeah. world is in. But granted, you know, there's a lot of people that don't have jobs or their priorities have to be elsewhere. But mm-hmm. uh, the video yeah. game industry has been like uniquely. Uh, suited to adapt to these kinds of situations because you know they're all they need are their clients to basically just stay home and play games right so uh i'm actually pretty excited for next gen this is going to be the first generation where i was really an adult because when the <laughs> last or yes current gen came out 2013 so i was in my first year of college i had like maybe 200 bucks in my bank account <laughs> So this is the first time where I'm kind of going into it with adult mindset. And I'm just like, yeah, I have the money to buy all of these and every single accessory, but do I really need to? It's true. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, fuck, where do I spend choose. my time? <laughs> well, because uh, as an adult, your, your, your time is so precious now and mm-hmm. you can't just sit and play games like you used to as a kid. Controversial hot take that I won't get into too much here. Uh, games need to be shorter. Long, long games are bad depends i will say yeah, topic for another day <laughs> i mean i will say that like the playstation 4 was the first console that i actually like saved up and like traded in stuff for the rest i got is like christmas gifts or like birthday gifts and stuff but it was the ps4 where like i i sold my wii u because i had nothing to play for it this is like back when there's that drought of just like nothing and i'm like why do i own this if i'm not even u- using it so i ended up trading it in to help pay for the playstation 4 and just that like wave of satisfaction when i went to the gamestop and paid it off with like my own money that i got from like doing doing chores around like the or on the cul-de-sac and stuff being able to pay for that and my first like at, at the time next gen game it, it, it just felt so like it just had that rush so being able now to like get get these next gen systems now just feels like oh my god like the next gen's like literally a month and a half away oh, and we're literally getting like pc style like graphics and like the look just, my just, camera has died oh no <laughs> it's okay go ahead it's just like it's just like it is so it is a lot launch titles too yeah it's Ooh. oh oh yeah i remember the time of my playstation 4 i pre-ordered pre-ordered watchdogs thinking it's gonna be really cool oh. then i show up the day of and the gamestop guy's like uh they pushed it back and i was like when and he's like this morning i was like then what do i get he's like we have assassin's creed i was like fine i'm like just throw it just give it to me I was hey, like, that's better fine. choice than kill zone shadowfall <laughs> oh no 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 that game was decent it was not as polished as, <laughs> as two and three but well, i i would I defend that kill zone. <laughs> that's my thing um, okay, dude. i was gonna say sarah that i know your pain of paying something off because when i when uncharted 3 came out and i got i i made the decision i was like a you know what spry little 19 year old uh fresh out of high school you know and i i was like i'm gonna i'm gonna go and buy myself uh, the un- collector's edition of uncharted 3 because i i i didn't ever really get a, a, a collector's edition of anything before that i literally scrounged my mom's car for like an hour for change to make up the difference and even then i had to find someone in the parking lot and ask them for a dollar 
Nice. It was yeah. embarrassing. Nice. <laughs> All right. Man, whatever you got to do. Man, <laughs> man, but that doesn't seem hit different, though. Yes. <laughs> All right. Mo- moving on to next gen. Uh, has, has anyone actually been able to to grab a console? Yes. I was Hello. able to grab both Aww. of them. Oh, I have All right, so Sarah has good news. Uh, you can go last because oh, thanks. I don't, we weren't as lucky, so y- y- okay, you can uh, you can fuck off. That's fine. Thanks. Bye. Um, so oh, I, 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 w- I was following I was following Wario sixty four on Twitter just because he's like so on point with deals in general. So he said, "Hey, Walmart six p.m. Refresh the page. Be ready to go. It's gonna it's gonna go." So I'm I'm F five you know the entire time, uh, even leading up. It's like five fifty nine. I'm like might as well refresh right now website crashes i'm like i'm like oh fuck 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 i opened a different tab i'm f5ing on all of them and uh, i see it i add it to the cart and i hit click i'd already logged into walmart i'd put in my credit card information all i had to do was hit order and it's not even 601 it's all fucking sold out i'm like god damn it so, so yeah no luck for me i just kind of gave up after that i casually looked for the series x because i told myself i i'm not going to get it an xbox at least soon because you know as Corey previously mentioned all the xbox exclusives right. are going to be coming to game pass which is available on pc but me knowing that i love tech i will probably wind up buying it regardless but uh yeah no luck for me um yeah, Sarah, you can still go last. I'll let Corey go. <laughs> Thank you. Um, <laughs> uh, so, um, funny story. I wasn't lucky. My, it wasn't even me. I didn't get the console. You know who got the console? My boyfriend. He got the console. Shout out to your um, boyfriend, dude. Yeah. You want to shout? <laughs> you want to put his socials out there? Um, <laughs> well, the one that he would care about is if you guys have the app Letterboxed. Um, it is a social media app mm-hmm. specifically for reviewing movies. Um, hit underscore me follow him there so (laughs) um he would love that anyways so i was just like you jose i i literally was f5ing um the whole time especially amazon like uh pacific standard time i was waiting for 9 p.m and i was like because that was my understanding i was like okay 9 p.m that makes sense right that's normal like they're gonna do pre-orders right at nine um well apparently some you know as you would say, chuds on, on the uh, internet <laughs> decided to leak the, the links to like the back door entrances on Amazon, um, on Twitter and Reddit and all that stuff. And so literally 20 minutes before it was sold out, before the page even went publicly live, it was sold out. Mm. And I'm, can we all agree to say fuck scalpers? Yes. 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 Fuck scalpers. Um, <laughs> So um, how it worked was I tried Best Buy in a futile final attempt. My credit card actually went through, but then three or four minutes later, they canceled my order. Oh no. My boyfriend ordered, (laughs) he added the, the Geek Squad protection and he also used PayPal. It's been about two weeks now and they haven't canceled his order. So we have a theory that basically Best Buy isn't canceling his order because he ordered the Geek Squad protection. It's all because of the Geek Squad. <laughs> Literally. It's, because because pro- it's protection place. money, dude. They're shaking you down. Yeah. So we have a PS5 coming. Nice. Okay. Mesa? So for me, uh, there was the, the, the message that was, hey, guys, looks like GameStop will have uh, some extra PS5s on Friday if you, if, if you go into the store, right? And I'm like, cool. Awesome. All the best, my, all the all the game stops around me open at noon. Okay, I have to go into the office at one p.m. No. Oh no. Oh no. Yes. So like, um. What can I do? What can I do? So I make this entire plan. Like, all right, I'm gonna go early. I'm gonna get what I get. Most of the things I need to done done first, and then at like eleven forty, I'm gonna rush to the nearest Best Buy uh, GameStop, and hopefully it's a small one, so no one's gonna. Uh, got there, lying across the lying around the building, and the guy was out there saying, "If you're past this point, you don't have one." Damn. Oh no. Oh, no. Uh, Damn. That's the so, worst. so I was like, "All right," I just. Went home, just sulked for the rest of the day. Oh, uh, walk up Damn. sadness. Uh, and what? Oh, I'm sorry, um, Corey and uh, Mesa. Any interest in the Xbox? I'm trying to grab that. Uh, Not personally. Eventually. 
Uh, eventually, because I just, um, though honestly, it, I think there's a lot of technological improvements that Sony has done with the PS5 that just seem to be not there in the Xbox that makes me even less interested in it. Um, Specifically the SSD. <laughs> Um, the SSD also, you know, some of the, cause like in, um, you know, the Mark Cerny talk, uh, that was a few months ago. He the said weird, that, hey, like, you mean that, <laughs> you mean the, you mean the ASMR he dropped, dude? <laughs> he, he wants pictures of your ears, Vince. He wants pictures of your ears. He talked like, he said like, Hey, um, you know, we worked very closely with AMD. So if you might see some stuff in the PS5 that will eventually be an AMD graphics card. And honestly, I'm more interested in getting an AMD graphics card now than a, a Series X. Exactly. Um, right. And yeah. not, that's not to say that I'm not interested in a lot of like the launch titles and like the stuff that's going to be Microsoft exclusive. Mm -hmm. um, like a lot of the games, uh, I'm just uh, off the top of my head, Hellblade 2, I'm freaking stoked for. Yes. yes. Um, you got to finish that. So. Game. Yeah, I recommend it. Please um, do. Kept falling, so, kept falling asleep. On, on basically on what Mesa said is is I'm more interested in down the road upgrading to a better graphics card for my PC rather than getting an Xbox. Yeah, okay. Xbox just seems to be just stronger when I, when like um, the PS5 seems to be more powerful with actual like thought around what's going to happen in the future. Yeah, I think we'll go into it go into it a little bit later but i think um just kind of like the bullet point thing of it that stands out to me at least and you can you can correct me on it mesa um the so on paper the xbox is just overall more powerful than the ps5 the difference yes. being that the ps5 has uh some proprietary technology in its ssd that the xbox Mother is not able yeah. to do yeah mm. is that is that generally correct yeah essentially um all right so so we'll um, we'll save that for later later because um as much as i don't want to we have to let sarah talk about how she managed to get a <laughs> ps5 so i i guess you can go so um i literally got mine by literal shit luck i had literally gone to like get my hair fixed and I was literally not on my phone for about an hour. So while the whole shit show was happening, I'm like, oh my God, everybody's dropping it out once. I go on my phone and a really good friend of mine had messaged me and he's like, hey, it's up at Walmart. And I literally out loud in the middle of the street go like, what? Like, I'm like, excuse me? And I click the link that he sends me and it's still in stock. Now I was planning on getting the digital. That was like my plan. Cause I, I, I wanted to save money. I'm like, you know what, just fuck it. I'll get digital. Well, the link he sent me was to the Discord. So I quickly panicking, I press the button, it gets sent to my cart. I go, oh my God, I think I have it. I go into my cart, I go to pay, I put in my debit card, debit card gets de gets declined and locked. Cause I don't buy at Walmart. And it's like, what is this $534 purchase at Walmart? So I start panicking and I throw my credit card on there. I use pay, I use PayPal, which seems to be the thing that's worked for people. I use PayPal, got it pretty much in instantly. And it takes about three minutes, but I get to the screen where it says, where it says, oh, your order is complete. I get the confirmation email. And for like three days, I'm on strict panic because I'm scared because I hear Walmart starts canceling orders. And I'm like, oh my God, I lost it. It's, it's it is still up. I check it pretty much every day out of like constant fear of I'm never getting it. And so Tuesday comes, it comes around and my parents are very nice. I'm very grateful. They're like, hey, get yourself the Xbox. It, it's your Christmas gift. And I was like, cool. Wake up at seven in the morning, order Starbucks to be delivered. I'm like, I'm up. Let's do this. 8 a.m. 8 hits. Everything dies. Microsoft site dies. Target is broken. Uh, Best Buy's not even up. Best Buy and Amazon weren't up until 8.40. So the only like four sites you were able to get it from were Target, uh, Wa Walmart, and, and like Microsoft's actual site. Everything's broken, nothing's working. Like Target's broken to the point where you'd hit, put it in your cart, it would not show up or it would show up and you'd get to the payment screen, it would die. And for 40 minutes, I am like panicking. I'm like, this is, oh, please, please. Like, and all of a sudden that same friend sends me the backdoor link to, so what Microsoft was doing, and I don't know if anyone else saw this, what Microsoft was doing was you would put the Xbox into your cart, but it wasn't finished yet. Microsoft would send you to this page where they're like, hey, do you want to add on a controller? Oh you want yeah. On a charger? Yep. And that, just to get to that page, that site was broken. 
But oh, people no. found out that if you linked to that page, you could get there completely fine. Didn't they have something going on also where it was basically like uh, it told you, please don't refresh the page. Otherwise, we'll get sent to like the back of the queue. That was all bullshit. That was GameStop. That was GameStop. I had GameStop open on another tab. But so my friend finds the link to that, like putting your cart page and he sends it to me and I get through. No, no waiting. It's seconds. It instantly pops me in. I put it into, into my cart. I get in my cart with no issues. Now, the cart page is running slow. But then I get through, I get a confirmation message, then not even seconds later, Wario64 posts on Twitter, the Microsoft store is sold out. <laughs> so I got it literally seconds. So that panicked me. So I ended up getting a second pre-order on Amazon just in case, because thankfully Microsoft doesn't charge checkout. Amazon doesn't charge a checkout for pre pre-orders so i just got a backup one at amazon but i'll probably be canceling that soon because microsoft hasn't canceled mine so I well still got you are lucky you are <laughs> yeah. lucky so you got both consoles yes awesome yeah. so can we all be like united against sarah in this uh, <laughs> I, mean, I mean at least Corey. Corey's lucky to have uh, i don't know Corey's boyfriend's name so i'll refer to him as Corey's as Corey's boyfriend <laughs> but uh me yeah no uh, me and may sarah out of luck you can come over jose and we'll, we'll play we'll play when this pandemic is over <laughs> that sounds good to me all right so, but now so this whole thing of like where are the games like amazon barely has any pre pre-orders up they only sarah want, like, sarah you, like, you need to jump on the digital bandwagon so embrace oh, the future devil, <laughs> De- devil may cry special editions only launching on digital day one good that's so i kind of so have annoying. to oh it's so annoying so i kind of have to but <laughs> all right let's 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 move on to the actual consoles now all right so on the xbox <laughs> side yes <laughs> Uh, this first episode is beautiful. <laughs> keep <laughs> keep it casual. <laughs> All right. So on the Xbox side, we have the Xbox Series X, which is, uh, as we mentioned, the most is going to be on paper the most powerful console. It can do mm-hmm. up to, uh, I believe it said it can, it can even output 8K, but that's not for games. That's for uh, playing media. But so 4K and up to 120 FPS. I don't imagine any game aside of it's going to be inside even if it's i'm sorry i can't talk right now i'm <laughs> sure maybe like n plus could yeah if, if it if it's like an indie game where there's nothing graphically intensive going on yeah yeah 4k 120 otherwise um i don't think you're going to be playing halo infinite at 4k 120 that's going to be 1080 or 1440 Not um yeah uh well, the I mean, x also comes with a the like call of call of duty developers coming out being like you can play our game at eight at like 8k 1080p and i'm like how <laughs> they're like you can do it yeah <laughs> i'm like okay right. that's fine <laughs> like screaming like you, can, you not know. to mention we don't really have consumers don't have 8k tvs yet yeah so that's not even a fucking thing i think it's just future proofing that will net by the time it becomes even normalized those consoles will be will be out mm-hmm. <laughs> or out the door i mean yeah. yeah yeah all right the x also comes with a one terabyte drive which uh there's actually a point i was going to bring up later um file sizes for games right now are already pretty fucking big you look at like modern warfare for just for the um for the warzone game mode it's like 100 plus gigs and each update's adding like 10 at a, 10 more gigs at a time uh so i don't think one terabyte is nearly enough in the uh, SEC uh, Discord, I was telling people, like, look, I started this generation off, at least with a PS5, with uh, just the launch 500 gigabytes. So you could have, and, and, and at launch, games were only like maybe seven gigabytes. So like, I think the, the highest echelon of that was like maybe 20. So it wasn't too big of a deal. But as the generation goes on, you know, you got 50 gigabyte games up to 100 gigabytes. So in my for my PC, Xbox and PS4, I invested in external drives that are four terabytes each, which is uh, eight times the amount of storage as the launch PS5, PS4. So I just had my entire digital library available to go at like any point I wanted, which was really convenient. So I'm a little bit worried about the terabyte uh, drive space being taken up pretty quickly, even though 
um, with the SSD, I, Mesa probably knows a more technical answer for this, but basically with the way that SSDs are able to load assets, they don't need additional copies in the same manner that HDD uh, hard drives use. Mm -hmm. So for example, I believe, uh, wow, my camera, yeah, my camera went out again. That's fucking annoying. Uh, I will fix that in a minute. Mm -hmm. um, but so I believe uh, Miles Morales, the uh, disk space came out. The PS5 is actually, I believe, two gigs smaller than the PS4 version, which it's not like a big difference, but it's pr it's pretty crazy that you imagine like, wow, this is uh, 4K assets. Then they did a lot of, and they added a lot more into the game. And yes, it's, it's still a smaller file size. Um, so moving on from that, uh, one, one feature of the Xbox uh, Series X, I almost said well, Xbox One X because this whole <laughs> naming convention is fucking yeah, confusing. Yeah. Uh, Multi-game suspend. So you're going to have um, multiple games running in the background. So if you're playing something single player and... Um, and your buddy hits you up like saying like, hey, let's play Overwatch. You don't have to quit out of your game like if you're not at a save point or whatever. Uh, all games should have auto save. I'm just going to throw that out there. Uh, so I, I think that's something that uh, I relied on resume pretty damn often on my PS4 and then Switch obviously does it wonderfully. Xbox is kind of hit or miss with it. Some games just don't yeah. like it for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. and, hell, and hell, PC can't do suspending whatsoever. I just kind of leave it running in the background if i have to go to work and i couldn't get to a save point so any any thoughts on the series x specifically while i fix my yeah. camera those so features was, are oh go ahead go oh, okay um so i was honestly i was surprised um i was surprised just in general about how little the hard drive space was i I don't know about I don't know about you guys, but my brain was like, "Oh yeah, with these next gen consoles, it only seems natural to have larger hard drives. Like the the, the bare minimum, I think at this point should be two terabytes, because games, like you said, are getting bigger and 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 requiring a lot more space, especially for those people that really are um, the, that believe in like digital only." Um, I like physical copies as well as digital. It just really depends on the game. But um, yeah, I think that's what really shocked me the most. Oh, For me, yeah. it was more of the size of it, honestly. Like, because oh, okay. I get that like, oh, or, or no, honestly, it's the size of the consoles. Like, I get that you guys want to add like more like, oh, here's this big hard drive that we're putting in it. Oh, here's this liquid cooling that we're putting in it. Okay, but like some of us don't have the space anymore. <laughs> like it's like some of us who live in like super tiny like studios or in super tiny apartment or rooms. Like now I'm literally more worried over the fact of how am I going to fit this? Or how much of my own shelf space do I need to rearrange to fit this? Than like actually thinking about the console itself because because like I feel like we're so far in this in this like in like the video game landscape that we shouldn't have to worry how big a box is. But now like Microsoft's toting like how small like the Series S is and all the memes of like the X being a fucking fridge. And I'm like, I don't want it to be a fridge. I want it to fit. Like, I don't want to have to like move everything. I, but now I'm more worried about that than anything else. I'm having to mount my TV just to fit my PS5 yeah, on my like, dresser. That's like, like, that's like my fear <laughs> that, I'll, that I'll have to literally mount my flat screen <laughs> when I literally don't know if like the wall can handle it. Like, mm -hmm. Find those studs. You gotta find those studs. <laughs> I yeah, I knew I knew um, storage was gonna be an issue the second um, they started talking about um, using the newer AMD into uh, um, architectures, and uh, they mentioned the, the PCIe Gen four, which is like the newest standard. Which means newest standard means the most expensive. So I knew <laughs> I knew that was happening, um, and, be, and like you know. Just to go back to what I was saying about the difference between the PS5 and the Xbox Series X, you can really see that in the way that they're handling uh, storage of games, where um, I believe it's the Series X, um, you can plug in a hard drive and play Series X games off that hard drive. But I, I just want to interject. I'm sorry. I yeah. oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I was going to say, but for the PlayStation, you can store games on a hard drive, but to play them, you have to swap them out with this in the SSD. Okay, uh, building off that, I actually just want to bring up um, PS uh, Sony hasn't put out any details about the 
um, using external drives in, in terms of uh, for running PS5 games. Xbox has. You can get a one terabyte, what's a, what's a effectively a memory card for uh, $219, I believe the price was. To me, that's fucking ridiculous. That's that's uh, mm-hmm. Vita memory cards all over well, again. Well, so me, so me and someone in a group that I'm in did the math and we're like, so if you buy the Series S, okay, and then you buy this $220 like memory card that you can store your games on that's more than the series x is like microsoft's basically not really forcing you but they're like hey if you want to be able to hold all of your games you have to literally pay the price of a series x you, you might as well get the x at that point and, and the thing yeah. with the s is that it's half the uh well it's not half but half the storage size it's uh 512 gigabytes which after the os and whatnot it's closer to 420 somewhere around there also i was gonna i was gonna ask because not being personally not being super knowledgeable in in the xbox uh gamosphere um or uh economy um ecosystem uh, ecosystem thank you that's the word um the so the xbox there's three different types of xboxes that are coming out correct two 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 i thought there was one between the series s and the and the series x no. no. Okay. It's just the Series X and the there's the, the Series X and then there's the S. Okay. So there, then that there's the was there's the, the Xbox. Um, there's a 360, yeah. the Xbox One, Xbox One S, the Xbox Xbox One X, Xbox yeah. Series X, so, Xbox One S. That's what when, Series. Fuck. Yeah, I fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> so then I understand that the Series S is a more affordable option for for the mm-hmm. new console coming out. It, is the Series S basically the equivalent of what an Xbox One X would be? Not no. exactly. Uh, yeah, yes. that actually has gotten some some um, play. There's a famous there's a there's an IGN article that went across Twitter saying that the Xbox Series S cannot play the Xbox One X version of backwards compatibility games and plays instead the Xbox One S. I, really? I, yeah. yeah. So like, so like, I don't know if this, <laughs> I don't know if this example helps, but I recently played through Gears, Gears of War two, like the original a- a- Xbox three, 360 version on my one X. Mm-hmm. And the game looks like it came out like a year ago. Like it looked absolutely stunning. Now if for, I for what it's worth on a series S oh, yeah. it, on like the series S, it would not look as good as it does on my one X. Mm-hmm. They said there would be like its own unique oh, enhancements or oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Mesa. I was saying it would still look better, just not as good as the one X yeah. version. Yeah. Which is weird because the hardware in there is just like objectively more powerful than the X. Um, I, I'm assuming the issue with that is that the actually, um, I'm so- if, if, sorry. If we're talking about raw power, then the S is actually not as strong as the X. Yeah. The but the Series S, S is not as strong as as the Xbox One X. Yes, that's right. That's yeah. It wait, can't what? Do, yeah. It can't do 4K, correct? No, I no, thought that was the only yeah. difference was that um, the One S can technically uh, go up to 1440p. The the C the Series X. Sorry, let me. The Series S has a better has the same CPU essentially as the Series X, which is going to be better than the the ones right but um and the 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 graphics card will have like you know dedicated cores on it for ray tracing and things like that but in terms of raw actual output power the x is the the one x (laughs) is better than the series s yeah (laughs) i i I just can i just go on the record and say (laughs) they need to they picked a better name this is (laughs) look i would say sony nailed it the most out of like any console manufacturers like one Two. Just call three. it the PS5. Don't know it's what easy. It no one is confused. <laughs> They, it, they named the X, Xbox was like, you know what? Let's just start naming it like it's a sports car. You, you, they could have at least named it like the Series Y, Series Z. I mean, people people to this day, um, even uh, the layman's for gaming, it's uh, they still remember the name Scarlet and the Scorpio. Oh, God. I, I remember so those better. like, well, like that was how they. So if you bought a One X on release day, I remember this working at GameStop. You got a controller that said i think it said either like release day or like project scorpio on it like the controller literally said that on it that's really so cool. like they yeah, ran has, with that 
Isn't that how the believe- Series S leak was because uh, on the back of a controller or something? Well, yeah. no, we always knew that that like it, it was. Uh, yeah, it, it was, was the worst it kept was, secret. It, it was called Scarlet, I think. And then we found out it was called the Series S because that's what the controller said. That's how we knew better than the. Remember that how the the the, the PS Pro the PS4 uh, Slim. Uh, was actually selling in certain retails places before they even announced it. <laughs> I, I, oh, wow. I remember that. I might be wrong on this, but I believe I, I believe the uh, I need I need to think about it now before I say the name. The Xbox Series X was named Scarlet, and then the Series S was uh, Lockhart, I believe. Yes, it yes. was. Thank That's you. I, it's just so confusing, man. Just fucking call it the Xbox. I should have stuck <laughs> with those names. I want to go back to something that you said before, um, uh, Jose. Sure. Uh, I'll go back to memory cards, actually. Yes. The memories. Um, I believe Sony actually said, um, they did say that you actually are able to upgrade um, the storage on the PS5 to any uh, NVMe SSD that meets a certain, that meets a certain um, qualifications, right? The problem is that those cost like 200 to 230 to 260. So it's yeah. basically the same price range anyway. Same price, yeah. Damn. Fucking Vita, dude. Vita fucked everything up. God, those memory <laughs> cards were so fucking expensive. Like, uh, I'm just like, I just want to hold another dating sim on this, but I don't have $60. All you need is dinking around, but just card. replay that. No, no, man. I still, have your, I still have your Vita. <laughs> oh, shit. I forgot you had it. That's how much I don't <laughs> care about anymore. Vita back. <laughs> dude. <laughs> Dude, this, I borrowed the, it to play a, a Persona 4 like a month before the PC version was announced. And it's like, uh, I was like, hey, Mesa, take care of my Vita because that, that's my Persona 4 machine that gets announced for PC. I'm like, I don't care about that. My Whatever. Vita got stolen with Persona 4 in it. So I just kind of gave up on um, it. My, my Wii U got stolen. Okay. Moving Wait, on to some of the... Uh, Wii U get stolen? They broke into the house. Oh, they broke okay. into my house. Okay. They, stole, they stole my special edition with Skyward Sword Wii Remote. They stole, um, they stole all, the, I was in the, I was in the middle of so many games. I had Xenoblade Chronicles in it. I was in the Aww. middle of that. I was playing through uh, Deus Ex Human Revolution. That was the night before Smash Brothers came out too. Oh my oh, God. Oh, fuck. Oh, no. Oh my God. I'm sorry. That I sucks. was angry before, I was angry before, you know, the safety of my house got, uh, <laughs> Uh, uh, the sanctity of my house got dis- dis- dismerged. I had Aww. something similar similar to that happen to me when I was, fuck, I was like probably eight. And this was when, uh, I guess Melee still is the shit. But, that it, you know, it was recent. And I didn't know how to unlock anybody in the game. I didn't know you had to do events or cross the freaking finish line in the first stage of adventure with, uh, was you had to have a two in the first digit to get fucking Luigi. But, uh, so I... I don't remember it. I didn't know how to unlock anybody. I had just unlocked Mewtwo and like fucking eight year old me is like, what the fuck? Help. It blew my it, it, it blew my fucking mind, dude. And then literally um, a week later, I go to a baseball game um, with my family and I come back and they're like, fuck, someone broke into our house, dude. I'm like, but Mewtwo, I didn't even know how I got him. GameCube. That broke Aww. my fucking heart as a kid. Aww. Why did you just unlock you two? That's so yeah, it, it's like a certain amount of hours or something. Yeah, I forget I'm what sure it is specifically. I remember that was like, that was like the rare the rare gem back in the day for Smash Brothers. That was, was bragging rights. Unlo- yeah, if you unlocked Mewtwo, you were the shit. <laughs> Everyone wanted to come over my house after that, dude. Mm-hmm. Okay, moving on back to the uh, Series S. Uh, I, th- I believe we mentioned the Series X is five hundred dollars, which I was honestly expecting even as high as seven hundred, just given the tech that's in it. Uh, but the Series S is uh, currently going to be the cheapest next gen console at three hundred dollars. Obviously, it has weaker hardware, only does up to fourteen forty p, which most I don't know if any TVs do fourteen forty. That would just strictly be PC monitors. Um. In comparison to the X, it's digital only, which is, it's not necessarily an appeal to me, but as someone who only plays digital, I'm like, oh yeah, that's fine. Uh, Does anyone have any quick thoughts on 
digital versus physical. I mean, as so, so I have a Xbox One X currently, and I'm I haven't bought an Xbox game in years because I'm a Game Pass subscriber. And I will say that even with the amount of games that I download right now, I still haven't hit the halfway point of my Series X. But that's also because I'm smart and I delete stuff when I'm done. So I never I do feel, that. <laughs> it all so sits I there forever. Like, because the Series S has a oh, one terabyte, correct? Uh, the Series S has, no, it has a 512, 512. gigabyte. What? Why the fuck that's are they doing that? Why are they doing this? this? Especially what? if it's a digital only console, depending on what you download. I would have assumed they would have even put a bigger one in there. Yeah, depending on how much that you download, that can fill up very fast. Well, so like the idea of them just being like, oh, here, let's hope everyone's smart enough to like delete stuff when they're done. Like that's not how it works. To like, their to their to credits, um, you can you can store Xbox series or the next gen of Xbox games. You can store them on on HDDs. You just can't yes, play but them how many off of there. We're gonna have an HDD though. I would say a fair amount of people that play no, on current gen. No, I don't. Like personally, I don't have one neither for my PlayStation or for my X. X You're not X playing right then. So damn. It's like, but four again, terabytes i have every single i have like 200 games on my ps4 they're all downloaded <laughs> every I single think, one <laughs> well so i think i think the real magic with the um with the series s i think is the um the financing i think that's the real magic um, i i want to absolutely jump in i just want to address the chat mm -hmm. uh not question statement uh there's a lot of 4k tvs that accept 1440p but it's only really supported by pcs yeah i, I imagine 4k tvs would support it i i'm going to imagine there's going to be some black bars on there though it's not a like upscale i could be wrong it also sure. I, well it depends on the tv brand too yeah Okay. Plus, also going back to what I said earlier, 8K TVs do exist, but they're the type that you see at like CES. They're the type like, I can't like, afford. Yeah, yeah, like like <laughs> TVs that are like 30, 20K or, so. or like yeah. 30K, and again, they they've really only been sold at like C at like C C CES or like big tech conventions like that yeah because there, there's a very niche amount of people who a can afford those and b who even want to have those because not not many tv channels allow 8, 8k not many movies do 8k the only things that do 8k are like are like nature documentaries right mm -hmm. oh and official like, vegetable says that uh, 1440p is 16 by 9 ratio and it should uh stretch the full size of display so it's still better than rendering 1080. yeah yeah usually that's the case uh, where it, it adjusts itself and that it shouldn't mm -hmm. be a problem yeah uh, going back to the hard drive thing, just because I do want to address it, is uh, so you can't store the games on a hard drive. You just can't play them off of the S. You can't play them off the HDD. Okay. Um, so like, let's say I need to delete Gears Five, for example. How could you? <laughs> I love Gears Five. Okay, this, okay poor example. You? Let's pick a trash game, like Kingdom Hearts Three. No, wow. no, no, no. <laughs> you want to get punched Hot right podcast, now? You can get out. How about it's two against one, man? <laughs> oh no, I'm not fight. fight. If I want to be if I want to be Corey's fight, uh, Killzone I Shadowfall. If it was on Xbox, <laughs> I beat one. I beat two, and then I was out. I left. How could you? You're, you're a smart man, Mesa. Finish it. Finish <laughs> I had fun. It. You know, drivers are cool. Okay, so let's say I want to delete Kingdom Hearts three, <laughs> but I don't. I don't want to have to re-download the entire file size. I don't know what it is off the top of my head. What you can do is that you can store those files on your HDD, and if you feel like playing it again, you can just transfer them back. So that's still a faster process than downloading from scratch. And then you know, people have bandwidth issues and whatnot. Yeah. So yeah, um, I, I would exactly. say people could probably still invest in HDDs, um, even if they don't necessarily want to get that SSD memory card, the cursed uh, Vita memory card. Uh, all um, I know, all I know is that nobody here should be surprised about Microsoft, uh, you know, having a smaller hard drive for their Series S because they're always known for causing people to spend more money on their ecosystem. I would actually argue against that specifically, really? specifically because um, 
it, it kind of comes with being with the underdog of basically this entire generation but they've had to become like extremely extremely pro consumer and uh, one thing that the uh, next gen of next generation consoles of Xbox are doing that the PS5 isn't you can use your old Xbox one controllers you can use your old peripherals so that's uh, sixty dollars a piece that you're saving I will give you that um, again, just because I, I have heard some things about here and there negative things about Sony being very anti-consumer with some things and we won't even get into Nintendo and how anti-consumer they are oh, oh yeah I, 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 I did buy that all stars collection I caved same yeah so I bad. have not I have not I, was, I mean <laughs> I'm supposed to stay out of that face come on I, I love it I love those games so much but I I'm standing my ground with this and I just can't. Yeah, more conviction than me. <laughs> uh, I really only got yeah. the physical to like sell it in like a year for like ninety dollars. Yeah, Dude, it's just, <laughs> just like getting that this, money down the year. <laughs> this also this is the first time I played Sunshine since I had a, a yeah. GameCube. So and it's I, like I want to get it. For oh. that. Trust me, I woke up the other day <laughs> like literally thinking to like as soon as I woke up, eh, I should just buy it. And then I, I like thought about it for the whole day after that. <laughs> and I just... So, uh, all right, going slightly back on topic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I want to talk about the financing because I think the financing. Oh yes, absolutely incredible. address this. Go ahead. So, so for the um, so the Xbox Series S and Series X um, both have financing options through the Microsoft website, and I through certain retailers. I'm gonna bet most of the major ones will uh, accept this too. For the Series S, right, for two years, um, it's twenty five dollars a month, and that includes the Series S and Game Pass Ultimate. For the Series X, that's thirty five dollars. I think especially even in the times that we're living in right now, people don't have as much money. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is the most pro-consumer thing that Xbox is probably doing right now, making if gaming you, affordable and cheap. Plus, with them you, including Game Pass, you don't need to buy any yep. any games because you could just with get them the math, on, day, on day one. I actually want to jump math, in. I, I say uh, this I as... Say, oh, go ahead. Sorry, just real quick. With uh, you do the math um, for the Series S, you actually save $60 over the, the, the course of two years. Oh, wow. Oh, it's also worth wow. mentioning there's no APR on that. There's no interest. Yes. Oh, wow. Don't and uh, I, I want to make a very bold statement, and I say this as somebody with a Last of Us tattoo on their arm. This will be with me for the rest of my life. If any layman, whether it's, you know, it's like a family member, casual friends looking again in a game, they ask me what console they should get, I'm absolutely saying a fucking Xbox. Whether it's yeah. the Series S or the X, just the value with Game Pass alone and the financing also, it's just like you're set once you have Game Pass. Yep. I and mean, it's, oh, like and, I said, the, and the I big news is the Xbox game in months. Like, yeah. I literally download everything. Yeah. Like, and, I'm and like, with, oh, hey, we want to play through Halo? Let me download the Master Chief collection. Let me download yeah. this. Like, it's, it is definitely worth it. And especially on PC, too. Because it's like, oh, God forbid I want to play this game on PC. I mean, I rarely ever do, which, but I can easily download it. Which is game, it, it, yeah, again, it comes with game. So yeah, that, 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 um, that financing option is Game Pass Ultimate, which includes Game Pass for PC. Oh, wow. I didn't know that part. Which, by yeah. the way, by the way, plugging in with Game Pass, I'm not sure if they're still doing it, but if you have uh, Discord Nitro, they're actually gifting people three months of yeah. uh, Game Pass for PC, uh, which I took advantage of. Even the first month is only $1. That's that's yeah. basically nothing. Uh, that yeah. is how I jumped on it. Was I think it was E3 last year when like Microsoft was like, hey, for, for only six days, the first month is, is like a dollar. And I was like, sure, I never use my X. Xbox mm -hmm. used it since it's mm -hmm. worth every penny, even at fifteen. Yeah. It's also it's worth me. worth it. It's also worth mentioning that you can use Game Pass on um, even aside from like if you have a dedicated dedicated gaming PC, you can uh, use X Cloud. You can stream games on your phone. If you have uh, a, if you have like an Android, <laughs> yeah, if, if, <laughs> yeah, if you're if, <laughs> yeah, if you if you're a good person, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> no iOS is over here. Yeah, if you have an Android phone or you can just do it, I yeah, believe you me. can do it on a web browser right now. I just want to play DMZ on the go, Xbox, please. <laughs> like, please, that's all I ask. Uh, I, I, had, I worked in retail at Best Buy for a, quite a few years, so I was able to get, like, 
two years worth of Game Pass for free. And I, oh, I was, wow. It's out now. Unfortunately, it went out like a month ago, but it was it was it was great. It's also worth mentioning that um, I think Sony was even uh, ahead of them with uh, what it was, what's it called uh, PS Now. But it, when it launched, it was strictly streaming games, which, yeah, you know, now is which, okay. I, I have I, pretty damn good Internet, but streaming I, for me, I, the latency kills it for me personally. But, you know, I'm so, a big PC guy. I'm a little bit anal about it. And they have improved their catalog and you can now download PS4 games natively to your console. So you don't have to stream them, although you still have the option, but they do not market it like that i like yeah. i even when i'm not using game pass I, I still want the subscription go in the background like netflix or disney plus shit like that yeah but but i'm just consistently seeing whether it's in my twitter feed or people talking about it or just xbox letting me know via my phone just like hey here's some shit that's coming to game pass and here's some stuff that leaving they let you they, they care about their service and sony does not care about ps now yeah the, I've, no, I've noticed that ever since um just ever since i even got a ps4 and they started like slight like even if it was like slight if they started pushing the ps now app on the playstation yeah they like push it, it up to the front and they're yeah. like hey we just added this to ps now. i've never i've never used it i've never had any urge to the get pricing it. was really fucked up at the beginning too yeah it was very it. expensive i was like why so I actually used it once, literally Same. once back in junior college, because my dumbass went, I want to play Resident Evil 6. So I literally streamed the PlayStation 3 version of Resident oh, Evil no. 6. It, even on shitty college internet, it ran pretty okay. Oh, that's good. But so, like, you could obviously oh. tell that you were streaming it. I, I don't know if like I'm actually playing it. I don't know if I'm breaking NDA, considering this was like not six years ago probably like five years ago i was well, doing in the open now so oops yeah. <laughs> i may yeah, it's well, so it's, the service is already out. Uh, I may or may not have been a, an initial tester for it, oh. but I, I will not. I will not verify or deny that. <laughs> um, it's it's also uh, Xbox just has a hardline policy, like all their exclusives, and we'll go into a certain yeah. acquisition that happened this week. But all their exclusives are just day one on uh, on Game Pass. Outer Worlds came out. I wasn't even necessarily planning on on playing it, but it's mm-hmm. like, oh wow, that's. Out. That that's, was, that's that was that's that's I played it day day one. Wasn't that's decent to your ahead. game. Like wow, cool. I'll go and give it a shot. I know um there's there's been plenty of games on there. Uh, Life is Strange two, Carrion. Uh, tell me why I actually haven't started yet, but it's just oh, like wait, tell tell me it, why is one hundred percent to me. And this is going to be a hot take. It's a reason to sign up for game game pass i've been wanting to play that game it was absolutely beautiful it's my game of the year so far it just was completely um, worth it and the fact that they that it's on game pass makes it so much more like available for people to play it like again it's i mean obviously i would have honestly bought it if it wasn't on game pass but the fact it was on game pass gave me an reason to be like i basically you have no excuse <laughs> like it is there you can play it and it's, do you know do you know if it's available on game pass for pc i don't know if it's on pc so, for I think which it's only on the Xbox. i believe it is i have it downloaded oh um, okay PC? Yeah. Okay. There we go. Perfect. Cool. And uh, awesome. it's, it's just, I think it's amazing. That just lets you try so many things that you, mm-hmm. w- even if you would have considered that, maybe you just wouldn't have spent the money on it. You just get so many more new experiences. And uh, I know, yeah, I know Mesa has been wanting to come in for a quick second. I forgot. <laughs> I forgot what I was going was to a, say. It was originally supposed to be about the, the streaming since I consider myself a bit of a, um, a game streaming, like, like uh like it's like um uh whatever someone who likes games should be alive because like i was i was i was a member of on live i played a bunch of on live games uh i remember when ps now was originally gaikai um uh i played ps now on, on a blu-ray player actually i played ps now i played um oh wow i didn't even know it was on one it's this one and uncharted one <laughs> it's like, oh, it pretty good um but um, I'm, g- I'm glad you got to play one good game on there. 
Ouch. We won't say which. We won't say which. It's, 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 it's infamous one. Uncharted one's not great. It's not. Yeah. Um, okay. Okay. Good. Not great. Okay. Good. I was about to say, no hating on infamous here. Infamous one is it's great. None. Uncharted one's also the only one with real magic. It's also the only one where you have to shake the controller to throw grenades. Not, not, the, not in the HD one. Oh, yeah. We don't, we don't need to bring up old stuff, all right? Let's just keep that in the past. We're all about moving forward, okay? Uh, fine, Uncharted 2 gave us a derailed train to climb up, so we're fine. <laughs> I, I see what you did there. <laughs> um. All right. Any any other thoughts on Xbox? We're, we'll jump into exclusives uh, okay. a little bit later. I'll, I'll bring it up later since we're, yeah. we're going to touch on PlayStation later, right? So yeah. Yeah. Mesa. Uh, last, uh, I just think that um, Xbox is in a really good place right now. Um, yeah, like, even if the discussion is about how bad their names are, they're still part of the discussion. Um, as long as you, as long as your name is in people's mouths, that's a good thing, even exactly. if it's bad. And I will say this as a staunch PlayStation fanboy, um, I 100% agree with Jose that um, the ecosystem with the uh, the Xbox being affordable and having uh, you know pro gamer friendly business Absolutely. practice and having Xbox Game Pass, it is so it is so gamer friendly and so user friendly. It it in that sense, it is the better console. Like that's hard to compete against. I think it's just hands down the better value. But does the Xbox have bug snacks though? Ooh, that's you know. <laughs> I am throwing it in the ring. Does it have Damn, bug sacks? Shots fired. Man. Does it have Fall Guys? No, it doesn't. no bug sacks. That's <laughs> gotta hurt. That has to sting. <laughs> yeah, I've been saying this for years now, and I was called crazy. But the the, the people call me crazy have gotten quieter every year. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go and move on to the uh, PS5, which I think universally everyone's pretty enthusiastic about. Mr. Uh, Sony Pony there in the in the bottom right. Oh my God, I, 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 I hate that term. That, that's the first time it's ever come out of my mouth. Hey man, it's like, I may talk hey. shit about X, Xbox, but I have a, a Gears one. of War ta- tattoo. Like, it's just like, it's they're kind of just stuck with me. They're stuck nice. with me for life. <laughs> There's a I, there's a worse uh, console uh, console uh, console wars name you could have said the Ouya. <laughs> no, no! <laughs> the I forgot about the Ouya the until you just said Ouya. something. <laughs> yeah. Hey, you 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 could play Resident Evil Four on the Ouya. <laughs> You don't want. You know what? I do own like eight copies of Resident Evil Four. I I I could go for a ninth one. Yeah. Why not? not? (laughs) (laughs) All right. On to the PS Five. We've kind of covered some of the same topics I have down over here. The disc version is five hundred dollars, which I, alongside most of my thoughts on the Series X being five hundred, I thought that that's that's lower than I thought. Than what I thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to be 600, 700, but I guess they learned from the uh, PS3 era that people are like, that's a bit too much. Yeah. Granted, uh, with inflation, uh, this $500 is nowhere close to that 600 back from when they announced it, 2005, 2006. Five, yeah, around then. Yeah. And I was even more surprised that the digital version, which is the one I was planning on getting, is, is $400 because. Well, it's basically the same console. It just doesn't have a disk drive. Yeah, it's, it's the exact same hardware aside from the disk drive, which uh, Mesa can can verify this especially if you're buying in bulk uh disc drives don't cost that much yeah, it's like true. what maybe like ten dollars tops but, for for a manufacturer see, to put it in but you see because it's digital they get exactly a cut on the digital game that, that is the that ins- it's subsidizing exactly our console it's cutting out the middleman of physical of uh physical media so sony and the developer is going to be making uh, more money and it's locking people and saying like yeah you, you can't go to gamestop you have to buy it straight from us so that hundred dollars cheaper is absolutely a move to uh to lock people in because otherwise the console would have just been like four hundred and eighty dollars if it, if it came down just to the parts difference i think that's really gonna um i mean it, it, it in the last decade alone uh brick and mortar um sales have 
really suffered bec because of digital only sales. Um, and that's just because of convenience. Consumers are wanting to lean more towards downloading their games rather than going to a store and buying them, which is, you know, understandable. Um, I also don't, yeah. I, is, I, I'm a little frustrated about it, but I don't blame retailers for having uh, someone in the chat can correct me on the, on the ratio, but I believe GameStop was depending on the size. I think as Sarah pointed out earlier, it's the size of the store. Uh, the ratio is two digital versions compared to eight uh, disc ones because GameStop doesn't want to sell a console. That's going to put them out of yeah. business. So yeah. But at the same time for me, I'm like, I don't care about the disc. I, I just want the digital I'll save a hundred bucks. I was seeing certain stores only having 10 physical and two digital. But like I talked about, like in, in the SDGC chat a couple days ago, it depends on how big your store is and, and how much money that you make the company right. monthly. And even then, I don't know if I, sh if I'm, I mean, I'm not a member of the company any, any more, but uh, most stores normally get one or two at launch to sell to walk-ins. Right. With the PlayStation, and, and I'm sure Corey knows this too. With the with the with the PlayStation, we don't even know if that's going to happen. Yeah. They they could maybe just get two physical place like physical disc PS5s and no digital ones at launch, mm -hmm. or they could get one digital one one physical like we don't know. And yeah. So the sad they, thing is, I don't think we're going to know until like which until the launch day happens. Yo, Jose, we're working together, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely <laughs> so so what, going off what sarah said is it, it, that's absolutely correct is that um it could be listed in in the shipment report that is usually emailed to store managers and staff um that like hey heads up you're going to be getting this many consoles coming in but then when the shipment comes in you obviously have to do inventory and then it adjusts itself for um, and you can pull out an extra one you'll be like oh shit guys we have yeah an extra PS5. so like you could have an extra one and somebody gets lucky or it could be like oh i actually um you know you have to email uh distributing and being like hey i'm short like three so yeah so Moving i mean on. i'm oh, sorry go ahead. I'm, ju I'm just gonna take a gander here and Corey can jump in if he wants to yay for past gamestop employees yeah um i have a I have i'm a not sure if that's a benefit i feel sad <laughs> It's, see, it's a lot we of learned, we learned a lot of stuff. <laughs> it's a lot of internal dread and screaming. I'll tell you yes. that much. Um, but also, you mean my I know, existence? I know what specific skews means. So when all you leakers post those skew pictures, we know what the fuck those are. Yep. <laughs> we can like read those. But it's like if I have a suspicion that stores are going to be getting either one extra of each or just one of the other on release day. I don't want to be quoted on that. I don't know. That's you quote. Write case. it down. If if, 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 if being around when the switch was like slowly releasing, I'm pretty sure that that's going to happen. I feel like stores are going to get one or two extra, extra and they're going to sell them for like first come first serve. Of course, people might tackle one another. That's fine. I'm not here to stop you. I'm not here to stop your life choices. But I, I have a feeling that GameStop is going to get some. GameStop I feel it's kind of surprised. We have to. <laughs> I feel it's weird kind of comparing this shortages between the switch and uh these consoles because obviously you know we're in the covid times the the apocalypse well, whatever yeah, you want to call it's it like and it's like i wasn't trying to compare them but like just working there i pretty much started after the switch launch right. so i remember getting all the like limited edition switches in and being told oh you guys won't get any extras and then we pull out two two of the pokemon Right. Like, oh, we got two extra. Like, and then that's, the, that's the what I'm going off of. Yeah, and then the Switch shortages were only aggravated by Nintendo being very notorious about uh, under-manufacturing. Never Whether, making anything ever. It's, yeah, <laughs> I mean, they, it, were creating, it's, they were creating false demand. Um, artificial by, demand, yeah. Artificial demand by limiting their supply. And that hasn't changed whatsoever. And, you know, I, 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 other companies have been known to do that, but Nintendo is infamous for doing that, for sure. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, moving on to the uh, one, one part that I'm actually very interested in talking about the PS5. I don't think that most people are talking about it's uh, the SSD. And so I th has everyone seen the Ratchet and Clank trailer? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if people saw I, th th this wasn't Mark Cerny's weird ear conference. <laughs> it was like that ASMR. He wants pictures oh, the, of ears, the, 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 the Spider-Man. Yes. How, yes. how literally yeah. it loaded in less than a second 
I was that's gonna, honestly what I'm most excited about. I was going to yeah. say that. Okay, real quick. So I right before this show, I literally was re-watching side-by-side footage of Demon Souls, like from the PS3 and the PS5. And oh, those load times are the ridiculous. The load times were just Literally, boom, bam, you buttery. are in that area. <laughs> just, I was like, oh my God, I can't wait. I cannot wait. Oh. Like it's, I think that's really important to actually talk about because people don't seem to realize. And I think we've just grown so accustomedly numb to it, but, but people don't realize how often you sit and use like loading screens. And, mm-hmm. and I'm not a Souls person, but when I played Bloodborne way back when, oh. just the load times took Ooh. forever. Now I'm imagining like seeing that Demon Souls footage, like, oh shit, like you hit that bon- a bonfire, bam, you are in the, you, whatever that like main area of Demon Souls is called. I'm terrible. I don't know. Or the, like, the, the, the Nexus. The Nexus. Where the like pancake yeah. lady is. I don't the, know her name. The only thing I the only thing I would say in defense of the Bloodborne loading times is that it gave me some time to cool off. Be like, okay, cry. fuck. I, 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 I cried. <laughs> I cried. Uh, go, going back to the uh, PS5 SSD, um, we've got the Ratchet and Clank gameplay up here that's not necessarily showing it right now. But, oh, being yeah, a, yeah. but, but because of the speed of the SSD, they are able to load in completely different areas uh, simultaneously. And that's, that's going to be for the exclusive games on PS5 you're going to see some really interesting stuff going on there but the issue being is that since xbox isn't following suit with that proprietary technology uh i sincerely doubt any third party developer is going to use it whatsoever they're going to they're going to make games with the lowest spec in mind which which is the xbox series s so that that technology is going to be strictly limited to exclusives which is which is a shame what i'm super hyped about with this and this little nitpicky thing but i've recently played a lot of games uh tell tell me why did this a couple other titles i played did this Uh, where it's where it's games that do the thing where it seamlessly goes from cutscene to gameplay and it tries so oh. hard. Basically, games try so hard to be God of War. <laughs> like, who go from, like, seamless gameplay to cutscenes. But I have i didn't notice this in God of War, but I've noticed it in every other game I've played that tries to do that. There's always that one pixel, like, tick where you can yeah. tell that it goes straight back to gameplay. It, and, it's and, almost like a jump cut. Yeah, and tell it's, me... It's very and slight. Me, and tell me why it does this, even though the graphics look the same. It still did this. What I'm excited for to see is if the SSD actually fixes this to where we will have what God of War did on the PlayStation 4, where you go straight from cutscene, straight to gameplay, and there will be no hitch. Well, I think we'll go straight into it and you'll be like, bam, there, there it is. Make it look like the whole one camera thing. But without that hitch that most games have. I know there's definitely a meme going around about that. Uh, specifically, I think it was some Naughty Dog developers feeling saying like, oh, damn, people hella calling me out of my shit just because they, they know what it what it is. They think it's funny, too. Well, it's like most most studios, because um, I know The Last of Us 2 did this and it did it pretty damn well. Like, yeah, I saw the hitch, but I still felt like I was watching a movie at some point and then instantly being allowed to play it, especially when you would go into uh, clicker areas. I like, love it, it when it's seamless like that. You into cover and then you instantly go into game gameplay. Like there are some companies and funny enough, it's all Sony companies. It's all Naughty mm-hmm. Naughty Dog and Sony Santa, Santa Monica. Like God of War, I can write a film paper on what God of War does for like seamless camera. No, it's all it's, one long it's, take. Um, it, it, it's I, just... It's, it's not surprising that that Sony really offers a, a very um, a cinematic approach to things. Yeah. Um, there were moments in, like you said, in, in The Last of Us Part Two, where I was I was just sitting there for a second from cutscene to gameplay, like, and then you did oh, like wait, that gameplay move. starts. You're like, oh my god, okay. <laughs> yeah. You're like, oh man, things are clicking around me. Oh my god, like it's. And I think what the SSD can do for that is fucking bonkers when you legitimately think about it's insane. it because we it's are because we are literally like this close to getting legitimate of course i say legitimate cin- c- cinematic experiences when we've had those for a while but i think the last of us and god of war are really good examples of how we can have legitimate cinematic game gameplay and i think this next gen especially seeing demon souls when the game is not normally cinematic, just that scene in the trailer with like the dragon, like that shit looked real. Like, 
and I'm, and I'm like, that's gameplay? Like that, you're running towards that dragon. That dragon looks like it's literally don't, like- Don't chase the dragon, Sarah. <laughs> it's, it's just like, I think we are legitimately at the core of having true cinematic gameplay, no matter what game genre that you're playing. Mm-hmm. Go, going back to the I tech side, I, going back to the tech side, <laughs> even for the um, for the uh, weaker SSD technology and the X and the next, uh, I can't even think. I have to think about the fucking the name of the console. Xbox the, Series S. <laughs> the new Xbox <laughs> Series S and the Xbox Series X. Uh, those still have SSD. So what I'm interested in is that for for what even third parties are going to be able to, to to do is how fast they can load in new areas or levels because um, there's a bit of a notorious trend in current gen gen games. Um, the two that pop out immediately immediately to me are Final Fantasy VII Remake and Tomb Raider, where they're trying to hide load times by you're just like uh, sidling along in tight little narrow Climb corridor a 90 story staircase yeah Do it's it. it's fun we promise as i'm it, like it, no it's not <laughs> it, it's super monotonous only one game only one game made it good what what's uh oh snake eater i never yeah. played snake Ladder? eater only <laughs> Telling me this now, <laughs> after like, you know, you only that that that's a discussion for another time. Anyway, yeah, going it's back to us right now. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, go, going back Sorry. to my <laughs> 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 go back to my point. So, uh, developers have been doing have been using tactics in order to hide loading screens to make it seamless. And I think as technology improves, that's not going to age as well as just uh, traditional loading screens. You can go back to Half Life Two back. In 2004 where you would go to a new area of the map and it, it would just pop up a giant not a giant it's a little um opacity thing saying loading and back in with 2004 graphics and cards just pause like everything would pause and every, like why can't i move? you're like fuck i gotta wait here for two minutes yeah and then um then you would go but on but on hardware nowadays you barely even notice it it's like maybe a tiny little micro stutter on on even a semi-decent card nowadays so in that regard i would say that age is infinitely better than than uh trying to hide it by going through a tight little corridor because sorry it's one more thing that i'm very interested about the ssd is is how it's going to handle ps4 and xbox one games especially with something what comes to mind for me is a side is a cyberpunk of how big they talk about how that game is my guess is oh my god how many fucking loading screens am i gonna have to sit through but is that going to change when I play it on like my PS5? I could be wrong. Did they not come out and say that there would just basically be one giant load at the beginning and there wouldn't be any loading at See, once you're actually in? See, that is what I don't know. I could be absolutely because, like, wrong Because like, they talk about how big the game is. Like, oh, we have named every street. And I'm like, that's fine. I'm down for that. <laughs> but like how many loading screens am I going to have to sit through to get to like Pacifica or to get into the... Uh, or, Arasaka? Yeah. Get, get into the Arasaka Ar- building. Like, how long are these loading screens going to be? And will this, like, next-gen patch that they say that's coming out day day one, is that going to fix it? Like, are we going to have literal, like, split-second loading screens when the patch hits mm. PS5 right. to, room, to where we don't have to sit through anything? We'll just instantly be outside in, in, in Night Typic- City. Right. Typically, one of the reasons I'm sorry, go I'm ahead. very excited for, um, one of the reasons why I'm very excited for GTA 5 on um, PS5, <laughs> not to actually play it, but just to watch the YouTube video, uh, week one of loading time comparison. <laughs> 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 that's going to be interesting. I think that's I think that's definitely something to take note of, uh, Sarah, because that's that's a that's a really good note that you bring up is is um, to compare uh, low times um, on generation to generation because we're going into this brand spanking new. We don't know what the load times for from game to game is going to be. Um, it really, I think, depends on the company. And as Jose pointed out earlier, um, with third party companies really leaning in on um, down, you know, downplaying their their capabilities with their software, um, it, the, there still might be some uh, visible load times there. Um, because the, the the PlayStation SSD clearly is um, 
very powerful in that sense. That I think the word you you are looking for is battered. <laughs> 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 like it is clearly battered. This, this is and what like, happens. That isn't me being a console snob. Like that's literally me no. saying it is better. Like that we have little I, video proof. Well, this is what happens better. when you own the rights to Blu Ray. I also I also want to I also want to add that like hey the the the, the 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 Xbox SSD still better than the vast majority of SSDs that are on people's PC. That's absolutely the true. PS5 five yeah. is just going to be a step better. Yeah. Right. But it's still better. Still better. Still Speaking better. of what also, it, um, PlayStation Five still has bug snacks. Can I, Speaking of what is okay. better, let's talk exclusives. Oh, but and can I can I like so segue- PlayStation? <laughs> this was a PlayStation conversation. Can I segue into one other thing? <laughs> yeah. Um, yes. So I want to talk about exclusives definitely, but real quick, I wanted to segue into um, one thing that we should be talking about because we talked about Xbox Game Pass so much. And you mean fuck J.K. Rowling? Oh. <laughs> yes. 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 Oh, thank you. We, Everybody, say, say it all together. Fuck yeah. J.K. Rowling. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Turf stump along. Here, no, this is, a, this is an anti turf house. <laughs> we have that LGBT tag on the stream for a reason. <laughs> Avada Kedavra turf. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I'm sorry. Uh, Go ahead, Corey. Um, her game looks like a mobile game. It's gross. I don't like it. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure the game will be fine, but there's so many other mm-hmm. things you can fucking play while not I'm supporting sad. a piece of I'm, shit. I'm gonna. Hey, I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna straight torrent it. Because it's like the game I wanted to since I was like five, right? Yeah. But f- fuck her. So I'm just going to torn it. And yeah. for what it's worth, the developers wins. got paid to make the game. They, yeah. exactly. however long they're working for, they were getting the paychecks. Exactly. Um, so coming back to what I was going to say, I was going to say um, that PlayStation 5. And this, I think this is a step in the right direction that maybe they're finally get they're finally getting their their uh, shit together with their PlayStation Plus. But the mere fact that they are offering for I think it's for free for free a, a crap ton of uh, highly acclaimed PlayStation Four games that are downloadable from PlayStation Plus day one of PlayStation 5. I think that's a great move, but my only issue, and I actually forgot to bring this up earlier, uh, where Game Pass, all their exclusives are on Game Pass. Uh, I don't, at this current moment, I might be wrong, but even leading up to this, I know it was for a fact, was um, Sony does not have all their first parties on PS Now. They want people to buy them. But I also feel like they're not doing that because I know when I was watching the thing, I noticed that The Last of Us 2 was missing from that list of games. We we know that they're just going to port that. Like right. come in come in like a year whenever the multiplayer comes out for it because Naughty Dog is still doing that. Well, it's funny. I that- feel like they're just going to port it. They're going to be like, "Hey, here it is at 4K, 1080p, 60 f- f- FPS." Like, oh, like I don't see and this is no offense to Final Fantasy but 15. I love 15. Hot You're a bad person take. with bad taste. Uh, wait till I get talking about 16. I am going to just <laughs> put it's like, let her like the boy band simulator. Like thank really. I like the boy but band. It's like cuz it's like no offense to Final Fantasy 15, but if if they had ported that to the PS5, I don't see myself buying it again cuz I've played it on PC and on PS4. Now with it being free in this like gold pack, I will totally play it. Okay. Mm-hmm. I want to see the the PS5 um like basically a little glitz and glamour that they put on it because I want to see like how last gen games that already look beautiful look on this next gen console that's like also stuff like they're putting blood bloodborne on it no one can complain yeah. like everyone's been no, saying like y'all I'm need interested. to play bloodborne yes, i mean that, that i think that might be as close as we're going to get with a pc version hopefully it runs at 60. oh well, i'm pretty sure it's going I'm, to i I'm think actually, that one if it doesn't i'm actually playing through bloodborne again uh through my on my playstation 4 um and i played it on my xbox Oh, wait, what? <laughs> I was, I'm just like, hey, you almost got me. And I was like, no, you didn't. <laughs> um, so, no, no, no. It's funny you bring that up with porting over games and stuff because there's actually a controversy right now going on with the whole Spider-Man launch thing is that oh. Sony is forcing people, uh, if they want to play the original Spider-Man um, on PS5, they have to buy the $70 launch 
title with Miles oh, Morales. I just okay, so I just want to I want to open wait, this up because I was quick for that. sure. Go ahead. I don't think that's really meant. Like a part of me doesn't see like yeah I I know there's like a select amount of people that played Spider Man on PS4 that want to play it on PS5, but I feel like that's not really for them. Like they're doing okay. it for those who didn't get to so play it. So I just I just want to say and I, and I think Mesa will will probably 99% agree with me. I think the entire upgrade thing is so convoluted on these next gen consoles. Yeah. Xbox came yeah. out and said with their whole smart delivery that their first party games you'll be able to get the next gen version for free but that other uh, publishers can do it as they wish mm-hmm. and then Sony hasn't been hasn't been on the game about it at all like so when it comes to PC if you own a game you own it forever and if you happen to get better uh, hardware down the line that game that you might have had to run it low at like 720 you can if you get a new card you can play that at 4k 120 frames so ha- having to pay again for for an upgrade it's, it's just ridiculous to me at least for for compared to what i'm used to but then not all games are doing that like cyber c- cyberpunk isn't doing that uh, marvel's avengers they, i think they, they should be commended for that and said oh you can play our games on next gen day one we do have a patch coming out to make them look better so it's mm-hmm. like yeah they should be commended but i also think that's just kind of be the standard that. i also just want to say that spider Spider-Man. Um, you can play it on PS5, but it's the backwards compatibility version of the PS4. Yeah, it, it's worth stating, yes, you can the, still play yeah. them, but you won't get yeah. the upgrade. Yeah, yeah exactly. you won't get the, the full the full the full upgrade. You would have to get Miles Morales. That that comes off oh, to me as anti consumer Sony just trying to nickel and dime. Well, uh, yeah, and I was gonna say that, Jose, is that mm-hmm. that that just goes to show you that that's another example for Microsoft being pro consumer. Mm-hmm. And I, I think Sony is m- maybe trying to shift in that direction, but it's 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 a hard sell to to the people up top in in you know their company. So, I, th- I think building off that, since we're already on this train, um, Miles Morales was um, discussed as a not a budget title, but it's more on the lines like Lost Legacy or First Light. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's fifty dollars, even though the kind of traditional mark for that was forty, and that's because it it's, it appears that first party Sony games are going to be seventy dollars. That's the new mark, and I believe there's some NBA game that's also been announced is seventy dollars. So that's the new standard. And if you compare it to Game Pass, you already know what the cost is up front. You don't have to worry about paying that extra ten dollars. Any any general thoughts on that price? Yeah, hike? but I also think comparing it to Game Pass is kind of. Mm-hmm hockey because not everybody has an X- xbox not everybody has a pc able to run game pass games i know family members i know friends who c- they can only afford one console a year that's true and but that, that would also be like, like why you recommend someone go down that path instead because well, you can well, tell them like also, hey you pay subscription versus paying 70 dollars for each of these admittedly high quality games a lot of my friends have moved on to, to a place play, playstation because of their exclusives they don't like right. xbox X- they don't like xbox anymore because they either don't like where halo went or they don't like where like gears went which i don't fucking understand them but it's for like, what it's worth i think gears is a better franchise than halo at this point gears you. 5 I'm is fucking solid too. i'm willing to fight that oh. too but oh, it's just also yeah. like i don't think everybody can have an xbox not everyone can have a gaming pc not even everyone can afford game pass like 50 bucks a month for 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 some people it sounds crazy is a lot of money a month and yes i get that it's amazing that it's an amazing deal i use game game pass i know that it's an amazing deal but it's like I also believe that Game Pass can sometimes be a bit overwhelming with how many games that are that are on it. That, that's true. That sometimes I open up Netflix, I'm just like, fuck, there's too much shit. I'm just Yeah, and it's wow. like I was, I'm just gonna rewatch the office. I will look at the Game Pass thing and I'm like, oh my god, there's so much fucking stuff. Like I have literally downloaded I downloaded five Game Pass games at, at once one one time. Looked at that and said, I'm never gonna get to all of these. <laughs> like they're just yeah. here like i'm never gonna get to everything on this list now if i maybe just owned an x xbox if i didn't play wow if i didn't play on my uh, on my playstation 4 if i didn't even play on my switch all the time i can see myself playing every game on game on a game pass but i don't do that i strictly bought game pass so i can get x xbox exclusives on day one so i could save a little bit of money so i can afford these like 70 dollars well, right. yeah, and, and let's be perfectly honest here, is that we are 
as 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 gaming consumers here, us four, we are aberrations um, in the in the sense that we're lucky enough uh, or fortunate enough to yeah. have all of the options that we do to play games. Mm -hmm. um, not on on what basically the note that you said, Sarah, is that not everybody has that option. Some people are either younger kids or not as fortunate, and mm -hmm. they only can buy one console. Mm -hmm. um, so. I would argue that's maybe even slightly offset by, I, I would say it's possibly even offset by xCloud just because specifically you can use a phone for it. Granted, you have to be a good person and use an Android, but you know. <laughs> uh, um, building off that, I'm not trying to plug uh, one of my older, more, probably my most controversial videos I have on my YouTube channel. It's, um, I understand the economics of prices going up. And I- One sec, guys. One. Everyone say bad thing. I would say say bad things about Sarah, but we've already been kind of ragging on her the whole time. <laughs> I think give her give her a break. Give her a, yeah. like, a, like a five minute yeah. break, and then we can go back to ragging. Yeah, <laughs> go in and get your Kingdom Hearts uh, thoughts out there, Mesa. Oh, I'll go and get my uh, I'll go get my Keyblade replica if I have. Oh, man. To. Oh no. Again, I just I, I played those two games. I'm like, damn, that's that was pretty fun. And then I and you mean I'm you don't happy. you mean I'm you don't want happy. to. <laughs> You mean you don't want to go through like the eight other side stories and prequels? I bought, <laughs> Can we all? I bought the I'm collection. sorry. Did we just talk about Kingdom Hearts when I was? No, 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 no. Here's what happened. What? Right, Mesa. What, happened. what? I bought the collection. I started playing one, and then my brother came uh, for Thanksgiving. Was like, "Hey, do you want this?" I'm like, sure. <laughs> <laughs> the collection is on Game Pass. Everything is on Game Pass. Can we also just come out and... S can we just, like, openly speculate? I think it's more of a fact that Sora is just gay for, gay for Riku. He doesn't I care mean, about Kai. I, always shipped it. I I remember that scene from Kingdom Hearts too. He sees Kai. He's like, whatever. Get out of my face. Riku, he gets on his knees and he's crying. <laughs> hey, man. There's a lot I of shit that happens in between Kingdom Hearts 1 and 2. I ship it. Hell <laughs> yeah. Memories happens, man. That was a whole fucking thing. That uh, blew your mind. We don't mind talk about that. That's true. We don't talk about Kingdom Hearts. Anyway, let's get back to a uh, good discussion. Where were we? Oh, the economics. Um, see, I'm not trying to pimp out one of my older YouTube videos, but I understand the economics of game prices having to go up consoles and games uh are objectively cheaper than they've ever been even if you see the 60 dollars tag you look back at super nintendo uh days there's no real standard standardization of prices you could get donkey kong country for 90 dollars which in 1990s currency is uh I, I can pull up a calculator right now, but I won't. Uh, <laughs> one thirty or so. Yeah, it's like one one thirty. You're paying one hundred thirty dollars. So games now are cheaper, straight out of the box, and they're they're objectively bigger as well. And, and with games having to be, be bigger, there's um, bigger production costs. It's more people have to work on them. So games are costing more, <laughs> but they're cheaper. Like the economics just don't line up with it, and that's why you see stuff like microtransactions kind of creeping their ways creeping their way into games and i've never personally had an issue with microtransactions i don't really play games on phones and that's definitely where they're more prevalent with five-year-olds uh going through their parents credit card like there's no tomorrow but i will um, say this i will say this shamefully i <laughs> in my boredom oh no i am playing a game on my phone that was that was you know bogging bogged me down with advertisements and eventually i just like oh whatever. you caved yeah i caved and i was like oh it seems fun it seems whimsical whatever <laughs> um i have shamefully spent i uh like at least 30 dollars in microtransactions on that game because they purposely make it harder so that you have to like Mm -hmm. Oh, you know, I'll spend a dollar for a thousand coins so I can like get five more tries or whatever on this level. And you're like, what's a dollar? It's fine. And then you do that like five more yeah. times. You know? uh, yeah, I played this dress up game. It's going to laugh at me like this like anime dress up game on my phone that I just spent way too much money. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like they like they get you like that shit oh, yeah. is real. Yeah like they will like drag you in and it's like oh man i just need this dress to finish this like this like dress battle but it costs like more coins than i than i have so it's so true. like it's so true it's it's rough. so it's like one of those things where it's like that shit's real it's scary and while i agree that i can ignore it in in like certain games that's fine but it's 
like what keeps knocking i would say for the most part in console and console or pc games it's it's relatively easy to ignore them and yeah. i remember the, like one of the big examples where people blew it the fuck up was uh assassin's creed odyssey because they have a oh, like they, oh, they have they I have totally ignored those yeah they have a tab for it which you don't have to go to and yeah, people say like oh the game's up. too hard and then you see that they're trying to tackle like a level 10 quest when they're level five i'm like come on dude just do the side quest there's plenty of them and then <laughs> this part made me laugh at people like angry joe i'm just like there's an option to lower the difficulty in the options <laughs> you don't have to buy better gear with your own money dude okay but like one pet peeve i have is when i keep failing at a game and i keep losing at a boss and the game's like do you want to lower the difficulty i'd be like no i'm fine stop oh uh, dude I've been, uh, are you talking I've been... <laughs> about devil may cry 3 by any chance <laughs> or the first maybe. game because the first maybe. game did that to me and i instantly put that shit on easy <laughs> I've been playing <laughs> through uh <laughs> going to easy. <laughs> I've been playing through uh I forget which Mario game is it? Uh New Super Mario Brothers U. And if you die too much on a level, it gives you a little Luigi block says, Hey, do you want me to just beat the level four? I'm like, fuck you, Luigi. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Mesa, yeah. you have any uh thoughts on the economics of microtransactions? I mean, well yeah, uh microtransactions, um, they're, they're, they're going to be here to stay. Um, as I think that right now, honestly, we're, uh, you know, people have the, fought back enough. Them, people have fought them back enough that I think you're actually at a healthy place with them. Um, I think people were more than there. justified with like calling out fucking Battlefront 2 where they were just yeah. locking like oh, you were yeah. statistically more powerful if yeah, um, obviously. if you if you happen to get this thing, which you can get by paying money. But I think right now, with all with the uh, with, with with all the games that have it and how they work in them, I think they're, it's, it's actually a very healthy place right now. So, I'm in yeah. agreement with that. Yeah. Um, as going back to exclusives, real quick, I was gonna say smooth that. transition. Hey. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> I was just about to do it. You beat me to it. Great Corey's the host Great now. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, uh, going back to exclusives, I was gonna say that. Um, when well i don't want to compare exclusives because let's be honest i'm looking mm -hmm. forward to exclusives on both sides yeah. of the ecosystems so i'm not going to do that but i am going to say specifically for the playstation um the exclusives just like any other uh generation are amazing and i'm looking forward to them so much um especially uh the the continuation of god of war um which is crazy, by the way, because I knew that game was going to come out as soon as I finished the first game because they they said it in the storyline that in three seasons, Ragnarok would occur. And and it's like three years. It's been basically three years and that game will come out. So it's, it's just a part of me. A part of me is like i appreciate playstation's launch lineup a little bit more than xboxes because to me there's more variety well xbox doesn't really have anything now though that yeah, halo got that delayed Halo's gone no yeah. well i mean they yeah. have gears gears uh, tactics that's a launch title. that's already been out though uh well no but it's but it's like a console launch title. but like what i was trying to get at was i appreciate place playstation's more variety to its launch mm -hmm. titles even to its launch window because just on day one you have Very fun. You have Miles. You have God, uh, Godfall. You have play. Uh, those little, like I actually have a little list like right Astro, here. If you want me Astro, to read them down, Astro there's Astro Boys. Like, oh yeah, go ahead. Yeah, go there's ahead. um. Yeah. So these are confirmed exclusives for PS5, and obviously, um, any first party studios that don't have things announced, you can still guess on what they're going to be working on and count on them to just release high quality content. Mm -hmm. Cat. Quiet. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so PS5, what I have down here is Astro's Playroom, which I've heard good things about. Uh, there's there a VR Astro game, right? Yeah, uh, that comes pre-installed. Oh, yeah, nice. Yeah. So you're basically like, getting a free, a free game by, by the PlayStation. Astro's is really interesting. It's very cute because, because Astro's was like, sort of became PlayStation's mascot now, um, in and a way. And it's so adorable. And it is, and it, which it is weird. Little, it has a little, it has a little head. So it's it's good that they're actually bringing, making Astro's Playroom a, a game that doesn't involve VR because that's mm -hmm. originally what it was for was VR. So 
I really need to play. I need to get. I need to get a VR set. My room's uh, too fucking they small just took for the it. VR out of it via via a patch, so you can actually play it without. Oh, VR. oh, I'll wow. have to check okay. it out. If I, if I remember correctly, it was one of the PSVR games that got a non VR patch. Okay, yeah, That's cool. So you don't need to use the VR. You can play it like a normal game. So it's kind of it, it, it. Without the VR, it's a little lackluster. Yeah, right. Because it was but, made for it, but you, but you yeah. still have an option. It's, it's better than not play. playing it at all. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> all right, going down the list. Uh, this is probably the one I'm most excited for. Uh, Demon Souls. My my history with the franchise was Demon's I Souls. Demon Souls. Yeah, you, uh, you have to say it correctly. They kept, they kept the apostrophe, Demon's. which I'm grateful for. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> oh. But uh, so I, I played the series in the exact order that they came out, but I it didn't click with me until I I lost bet with my uh, I guess he's my ex brother in law now. But uh, I had to play through Scholar of the First Sin, which is the enhanced version of uh, Dark Souls Two. So that's where the f series first clicked with me. So I what did I do? I beat Dark Souls Two, uh, then Bloodborne Three went back to one no I, I played Sekiro then I went back to one oh, God, so that so there's actually a good opportunity for me to kind of finally close the loop like hey here's the game that I beat like the first two levels or worlds on and I get to experience it in uh in a whole new way so I, I'm actually really excited for Demon Souls so my experience was more miserable than that um <laughs> <laughs> to be fair i think everyone was miserable this was the yeah, first one no mine, one knew what they're getting into was, uh, pretty bad um so i got that game around the time it first came out not ex no kind of expecting you know what i was in for and it was like you're gonna die a lot so just be prepared i was like okay cool um a challenging game I got so pissed off at that game and I finally beat the first boss, which was like a black blob monster. And yes. I couldn't get past the freaking- Phalanx. Yes, exactly. That one. <laughs> Thank you. Um, that's amazing you know that. <laughs> I didn't even remember. I, I remember the big old giant boss at the end of the first world. I'm like, how the fuck am I supposed to kill that? You're not supposed to kill it. You have and to then let you, it kill you. And then you learn the giant bosses are actually the easiest in the entire series. Yes. If, if a dude has a sword and shield, you're like, fuck. Yeah. <laughs> the point it's a human. The point being, I couldn't get past the dragon bridge, which is in the trailer. And I'm really not looking forward to that. Um, <laughs> but I am looking forward to the updated version of the game. Um, Sounds like that could really drag on. Get out. Just leave. Just <laughs> <laughs> where's the cancel button? <laughs> See now the reason why the only reason I'm excited, because I do not like Souls like games. They just aren't my thing. I tried really hard. I played Scholar of the First Sin. I tried Blood Bloodborne. Bloodborne made me cry. I couldn't uh, do it. It made like, me cry I, because I, it was so good. <laughs> I got like three bosses in. Like I cried after beating Father Gascoy. Like I was like, ah! I did as I'm like sobbing in my like junior college dorm roommates like you you're good I'm like Dude, no can I just as say I, like get really angry at it can I just but, say real quick yeah in Bloodborne specifically you do not know pain unless you fight against uh the the child of Nas or whatever the it's the uh, final it's yeah. the final in the boss. DLC right it's the final boss in the DLC yeah. and well, that was the placenta dude right yeah oh. placenta man oh my god like so so him. the only reason why I'm even slightly interested in Demon Souls is because Blue Blue Point's doing it and I played their Shadow of the Colossus re remake and that was the first time I'd ever had a desire to touch that game like oh I actually have it. Like I actually have the collector's edition. Oh nice! Oh nice! That's like cool. it, it became one of my favorite games of all time just by like playing it. And if I remember like, correctly, it literally became one of my favorite games because I never had any desire to to play it. Even when they released that PS3 like port of it, I had no dis. D d desire then blue point was like hey like i actually saw that e3 conference in a movie theater like i actually went to a theater to watch that conference live and just hearing everybody in the, in the theater like someone shout holy fucking shadow of the colossus <laughs> hearing everybody just freak the hell out i real i thought i told myself i think i have to play this and i played it and beat it in like two sittings like six hour sittings just because i got so into it like Shall I'm the so uh, uh, ra like enamored by it, and uh, knowing that they're doing this with their pedigree, I'm like, okay, you actually have me might want to pick this up. 
Shadow Class is actually a really interesting case because Blue Point before that was mostly just known as remastering games, you know, like up resing yeah. them, maybe <laughs> updating the textures a little bit. But Shadow Colossus was from the ground up uh, and they a remake. Away. Like they they even like they are an American studio who's like remaking like Japanese games, but making them feel just like they they played. Like they're they're doing insane work. And again, this has one me moment, interested. Guys. Huh? Give me one moment. Oh, I'll be right back. Like, like they have me interested in playing their Demon Souls. Re, 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 I think the biggest like in, pedigree alone. I think the biggest jump is that uh, you know Demon Souls was a early ish um, PS3 game, and I always tell people this because most people don't actively recognize it. I think the biggest difference aside from textures, the way the game runs, is, is shadows. Because you walk into that first room with the little tutorial boss in the PS3, it's, it's just like all kind of brightly oh, lit. Yeah. There's like light beam yeah. on it was nuts. When I saw that, I'm like, oh, this looks so fucking beautiful. Yeah, to me, again, mm. it was it was that dragon bridge. Like that scene, like if that's literally how it plays like and how it looks when you're playing it, I literally was like, this is next gen. Like, I was like, you could just tell by looking at this, by by probably playing it. Like, you probably feel the, like, haptic shaking the controller when, like, Dragon, like, flies up, up above you. Like, that scene alone had me instantly be like, holy shit, I want to play this. Nice. Like, like, I actually want to be on that bridge and, like, probably get that shit scared out of me as I'm having to, like, run from that dragon, like, firing on it. Like, they have me interested just the way that it looks. Right. And For I the- can't imagine the blood, sweat, and tears that they've put into this remake. Oh, yeah, definitely. Everyone stop saying bad things about Corey. Hi, Corey. It's Hi, Corey. So- I had to uh, visit the Golden Throne. Oh, the golden that was a oh. quick breath of <laughs> but, yeah, like, yeah, just, like, as someone who is not a Souls person, my want and desire to play that literally kind of even made me surprised after seeing it because i honestly this to me looks like what next gen is and that's why i want to play it and when we talk about final fantasy again like this is what next gen is to me graphics don't matter what matters is when i look at it and demon souls got me that like i demons souls like got me that (laughs) demon looking at it like I was like, holy shit, this is next gen. Like this is now, a next gen game. I wanted to ask then in that likeness, um, with this game being a a, a remake, uh, albeit from the ground up, um, do you think that the seventy dollar price tag is appropriate or from the way that it looks to me, yes. Okay. I think going back to the economics is that obviously as a consumer, you want the lowest price possible, but I've just accepted that uh, inflation has not kept up with it and prices for games just kind of necessarily have to go up. I mean, if they want to put microtransactions in it that I can that I can ignore and still get it for 60, I would take that any day of the week. Mm-hmm. Like... <laughs> I don't know. Uh, there's there's always this talk about remakes when uh, like like whether or not they should be full price, even though they are essentially brand new video games. Exactly. Like I remember I had a conversation with somebody about uh, Resident Evil Two, where like they're saying, well, it shouldn't be sixty dollars because it's not really a new game. And I was like, it's this is a brand a new, new video game this is there's nothing like okay maybe some some of the, the some of the story is the same that's it so, however like, however however going off of that mesa is that uh you, then you do have other other games like um i think the spyro reignited trilogy uh was then, 40 bucks was I 40 believe. bucks it was crash or 50. racing uh the crash collections of one two and three re- remakes um those were about 40 or 50 dollars um yeah. when it comes to like a remake so i'm not sure what you I think, think what, you well, know for what me personally on. i would say that those were just them missing out on 20 dollars <laughs> <laughs> i feel like those games are absolutely at the qual- at the the the, 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 the 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 tier at 60 dollars absolutely those those were fantastic remakes um and well I, and if we're, go- if we're yep. going off Demon Souls originally, it was when it came out for the PS3, $60. So the fact that mm-hmm. it's only like $10 more for a PS5 version, I think that's fair. Yeah. I would even I, go as far as I to say that with me, it. personally, I'm just treating it as a brand new video game. I would go as, as yeah. far as to say, I don't think this is weird because Nintendo obviously believes this also. It's uh, I don't think 
the game's not price, but the, the quality of a game does not go down simply because it's old. Like I still think Resident Evil, Resident Evil 4, for example, could be a justifiable $60 because it's still a damn good game. Now, obviously it's, I think it came out, what, 2005? So 15 year old game. I understand the, uh, if it's if it's old, there's brand, cooler brand new stuff coming out, but the quality hasn't, hasn't gone down whatsoever on it. I, 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 I definitely I definitely share um, most of that opinion. Damn, you're calling um, me stupid. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's just that you know, um, like I'm at the I'm at the the, the, the the like middle point of I definitely agree like that Nintendo mentality of like all because the game is old doesn't mean it loses its value. And at the same time, well, Breath of the Wild's like three years old at this point. Come and on. it's still fucking $60. <laughs> Nintendo historically does not lower their prices like, on anything. Like, yeah. Literally, countries crumble whenever Nintendo mm. goes, hey, Breath of the Wild is $5 off on the eShop. Literally, people freak yes. the fuck out. And I'm like, that is $5 for a game that is four fucking years old. Like, like, I'm, like, hey, I'm not saying that it needs like, to be. It's like, how about like $20? Like $40. What's wrong with that? Just like forty, just like a cute forty dollars would be good. Yeah, that's but why. But yet, Nintendo people still pay sixty dollars. That's why I I don't believe in the decision for them to make the emulated All Stars pack uh, sixty dollars. Um, Please don't remind you know. me that I paid sixty dollars. <laughs> we all paid sixty dollars. Maybe if it was thirty dollars, I could justify that. I would have felt but, better about it. Yeah. Um, See, this is why. And this is going to be a dumb thing about gay pricing, but I play a lot of dating sims. I play a lot of like Atome dating sims and literally all of them are either $40 or $50. And I'm like, this is a perfect price for this. Like if it was 60, normally the collector's editions of those titles are 60 bucks, yeah. which is fine that cause you're getting all this extra shit. But it's like, if, if I just want to play this game where I'm reading text and dating cute anime boys, $40 is a perfect price. $30 what, is a perfect price. For what it's worth, any game can be a anime dating game if you use your imagination. Oh, woo. Why do you think uh, I uh, Cyberpunk is my dating Keanu Reeves simulator? Okay. <laughs> Anyway, any game uh, could be a, a dating sim. Any. Right, uh, moving uh, down the list, I actually want to toss this down to Mesa because I know for a fact he is very excited about it. Uh, you want to go and take the lead on Spider Man? It is that is that like the second they said Miles Morales, I, like, I guess I'm buying a PS5 day one. It was. <laughs> it, I am so like. I was so excited for like the second they announced uh, Spider Man was the moment I was like I'm buying a PS4. Which was like two years in the city. Like the fact that they're forcing me. They're, they're literally forcing me, by the way. <laughs> they have a gun to your head, dude. <laughs> literally. Or a web slinger this, in this uh, case. <laughs> I, I'm kind of of two minds about it, like even just outside the context of the quality of the game, is that I think it's really commendable that aside from Demon Souls, the real flagship title at, at launch is Miles Morales because it's it's putting a um, it's uh, putting a person of color like on the forefront. It's like, hey, this is this is the title that's going to get in the hands of a lot of kids, but at the same time. Um, uh, this might be less applicable having it be a shorter game um, more along the lines of lost legacy and, and at a 50 dollars that, that kind of like subtly brings across the message of this isn't as big of a deal as the original spider-man game that came out in 2018 but uh regardless i am 2018 game was it was uh, fucking phenomenal and i was actually really impressed by how damn good the story was like you, you kind of know what was going to happen with doc ock but still seeing the entire process of it and the ending just it, it was fucking beautiful absolutely um uh yeah i'm um one of the things i believe they said in the mark cerny like the uh the mark cerny asmr the, the no the first one with the the spider-man loading times if i remember correctly is one of the things that he said was that they even um like like spider-man's max speed was so that they could load the city better as you swung, right? Right. So, with, you know, with how how it seems like everything's moving, does that mean you know Spider-Man PS5? Everything's gonna be running. You're gonna be able to swing faster. 
you're gonna have a faster top speed. You're that just going really to zoom. Excited. Oh, I'm so excited. You oh, dude, the, those side mission quests where you had to like fly through the little invisible hoops or whatever. I fucking adored mm. those. It's so good. So, so if it's, uh, you have to do those even faster, that's going to be way great. Than I, I'm, I'm, what, what I'm wondering is in Spider-Man Miles Morales is... Morales. It's Morales? Sorry. You said Morales. I, I, say, I, uh, I keep saying that. Morales. <laughs> I don't know where the I is coming from. Miles Morales. Um, You've been seeing that eel too much in Mario, dude. <laughs> no, so like um, one thing I wonder is is uh, obviously because his name is in the title of the game, um, it's mostly, if not all of it, going to be about Miles. Um, but I mean, as we saw, at, you know, spoiler alert for anyone who hasn't finished Spider Man, the first one. Um, as we saw at the end of the first Spider-Man game, uh, you know, Miles gets his powers. And, uh, you know, he, I think he shows Peter Parker uh, yes. that, that, yeah, he shows Peter Parker that, that he has those powers. So I'm not sure if they're closing the book on Peter Parker and Miles is taking up the gauntlet or if we're going to see a dynamic between Peter and Miles in the I th- new game. I think at least for this game, you're gonna at least, um are going to entirely be controlling miles but i would be more than happy for the eventual uh spider-man 2 to um to just star miles just let him take no, over because you you would think that they're leading up to that them having Miles. i doubt they'll do game, it and then be like oh we have this game in between the rest of our team working on Spy- spider-man 2 right or having this game lead up to spider-man 2 or like having the end of this game kind of like what the original spoilers for the end of the fir- of the remake of god of remake of god of war where thor shows up and literally the last like five seconds and you're like oh shit and the game cuts to like uh, uh cuts cu- cuts to credits something's probably gonna happen at the end of miles morales that leads into what their mm-hmm. inevitable spider-man 2 is i think um, at the, i think at the bare minimum in spider-man 2 they can at least let you play as uh miles for like half the game yeah. oh uh, someone in chat says they could be setting up for uh spider-verse i think that would be interesting i did see that too i saw a couple gaming outlets because i guess i don't know nothing about spider-man comics spider-man's i don't like him as a hero so just bear Ooh. With, with me Oof. from, from, uh, from, what, hot from what i know hot take. <laughs> from from what I know, uh, Spider. What if he had and Donald and Goofy Miles with him? Don't exist in the same universe. No, they they in the universes that Miles does. So does Peter. Okay. Yeah. In the in the comics, I believe it is pretty uh, clear that uh, like Miles eventually does get spider powers, but Peter is still around. Okay. Yeah. So like um so like if I remember correctly, Miles initially comes from uh Ultimate Spider Man, which is the ultimate universe yes. of Marvel Comics, which you know, Miles doesn't exist in the six one six normal universe that, you know, we all know. I didn't even know so six one six was a thing. You're already blowing yeah, my mind. I, I worked at a comic book store for like five five months, dude. You you stop. I'm a I'm a gigantic nerd, but as you said, I'm just like, wow, what a what, what a, a nerd. What a nerd. <laughs> what a four eyes, I say as I I've adjust only, my glasses. Yeah. I've only I barely read comics. I've read one Spider Man comic and like half of one Batman, so I will, I, will say, I will say this much. Um, it's great that we are getting a person of color representation in Spider-Man. Mm-hmm. However, in the, early, in the early adaptations of Miles Morales, um, there were rumors that he was going to be a, uh, a gay person of color. And the fact that he's not kind of hurts my gay little heart, but it's okay. <laughs> they need to just straight up have better um, LGBT main protagonists, not just fucking side characters. I agree. Yeah. Tell tell me yeah. why does this very very good? I haven't played it yet. <laughs> oh my god! Play tell oh, me yeah. why, please. <laughs> like oh, please I know exactly. play tell me why. I haven't played it, but I know exactly what you mean. Like please, just for the love of God, please oh. just play tell me why. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and by the way, game devs, um, having a having the option to romance someone of the same uh, sex or gender doesn't count if it's uh, a created character. Boom, you said it. Mm. It's not representation, it's catering. Yep. <laughs> All right, <laughs> moving on to... <laughs> anyone have any final thoughts on Miles Morales it or, or Morialis? It is the that I have pre, pre-ordered. Same. 
I'm, I'm, so I'm, that's, uh, that I'm, was nuts. <laughs> um, uh, same, but not on paper, just in my heart. Uh, Aww. Right. <laughs> no. All right. Um, Sarah, you were actually supposed to be on a stream specifically for this game. It's not a launch title. Death Loop. Uh, but it is in my heart. Ooh, we're going to talk Death Loop. Oh. No, Final Fantasy 16. Yeah, you <laughs> you were you were supposed to be on a stream for that tonight, but uh, well, rescheduling happened. But uh, yeah. I'm pretty sure it got pushed back. But oh my god, please let me just scream about the Final Fantasy 16 trailer for like a couple minutes because that trailer makes me cry every damn time I watch it because it's right at the end when you hear the very soft do 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 do, and I fucking just sob every single time. <laughs> because everything about that trailer is everything I thought I didn't think I wanted in a Final Fantasy game. So I had heard the rumors that that, that that game was was real. And to be completely honest with with y'all, I did not believe it. I thought, okay, that's just kind of low. Being like, oh, hey, Final Fantasy 16 in a few days. I'm like, I don't, <laughs> like, I, I, a part of me was like, okay, that would be cool, not knowing what to expect from it. But just seeing that trailer and seeing just how dark fantasy square is finally going mm -hmm. and don't say type zero type zero is not the same everyone's like that's the first rated m final fantasy it's is it rated m yes it is type, no. type yeah. zero was the first rated m i don't think it's 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 the same yeah, a child got drenched in blood guys we like this trailer literally zero. shows no, no, no. a child don't, being drenched in blood don't sugarcoat it now they got ripped apart Yes, like that <laughs> literally a child who I mean, I don't know if it counts because the child's a giant phoenix literally starts <laughs> getting ripped apart. And a friend of mine in the SDGC group brought up this really cool fucking point. If this is true, we believe that the main character, since he doesn't exactly have a name, we think the game's going to let you pick the main character's gender. That would be amazing Ooh. because the character. I, although I would, I, the only thing I would caveat with that is that um, if if we're just going by the mainline titles, we're at sixteen at this point. There's only been two games. I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, for for thirteen, do we want to count one, two, and three, or just bundle yes. them together? I would count three of them. I would count. That means you also count ten two. Yeah, exactly. So we have Four. to count six, ten two, and the three from thirteen. So they're they're. So with that. Wait, I'm trying to do math in my head. Brain, <laughs> brain hurt. All right, so we're at 16 now. Then you add five. So there's out of 21 games, there's only six where there's a female lead protagonist. Well, a part of that, the that's pretty unbalanced. I really believe this is because a lot of the team, pretty much all the team that's working on 16, worked on 14, and 14 was all about creating your own character and picking and picking your gender and doing like now i don't think they are going to go full on like create your own character pick their hairstyle like i don't think they're going to go that much especially with how they're teasing out they're going to do a time skip i think fucking like coding that would be utterly ridiculous <laughs> i think them allowing you to pick the gender of, of the main character makes a lot more sense because they're coming from a background of where you can like customize your own char character. Yeah. You can make them, I've never played 14. You, so you can make them a weird like cat species. You could like make them a tiny dwarf type person. I, I would yeah. say like, even, I would say the Final Fantasy community is like um, unique in the sense that they're pretty welcoming of female protagonists. So I, they are. I, I don't see why and, they don't just dedicate to it. And a lot of, most and of, I don't. Most of the, most of the characters in 14 most of the people pe most of the characters people make in 14 are female and it's like i don't have the numbers for this but you can argue that a lot of women like final like final fantasy yeah. like it's not yeah. it's not it's not just a fully men's franchise i have a lot of female friends who aren't exactly really big gamers who love final final fantasy so it's one of those right. things where like if if they allow the option to pick your main character's gender which a part of me believes they will especially because they strictly if you notice the main character main character's name is not given in that whole trailer he says i am joshua shield and that's it and a part of me is is figuring if that main character was so important they would have given us his name not just his like title but uh, again, another thing we should talk about is this is the 14 team doing this. This isn't like Square. That is, that is hands down the that is hands down the single most. Uh, I, I worded this sentence poorly. That's what makes me the most excited about this game is that it is exactly. specifically that team that and they that took from the original 14. They de they demolished the original and just rebuilt it so it. much better. Exactly. And so and because you know I I've been seeing all of this like arguments online of people are like the game doesn't look next gen. 
14 doesn't look like a PS4 game. I think I think w- what the gameplay that we've seen of 16 and the graphical like abilities that they're using like with all the whole fire physics like Ifrit and Phoenix are fucking gorgeous. You can't pull that off on like a PS4. Like maybe you could, but it wouldn't look as good. And just the gameplay, and let's bring up that the uh, combat designer of Devil May Cry 5 is doing Final Fantasy 16's combat. Ooh. What? <laughs> yes. Are you yeah. serious? Yes. Yeah. We're See, seeing that, combat that is, designers. That was, that was also oh one of my God, biggest, con- <laughs> that was my biggest attraction from Final Fantasy 15. I could not stand the combat. So when, so when like seven, combat. so when seven uh, remake came out, I, I loved everything about everything mm-hmm. about the combat about there. So the fact that 16 is not going to play like 15 is a big deal for yeah, me. Yeah, and the That's... fact that 16 is fully playing on Devil, Devil May Cry 5's like fast-paced combat scheme, That's... like I'm down for it. I'm That's the whole point of the Devil May Cry series is the combat scheme. Yeah, and, like... and it's like mixing that with Final <laughs> Fantasy story storytelling. And like I said, I don't think this is going to be a rated T game. I think they're going for M. And I just... think they should 100% go for M. <laughs> Did you I, also I, I mind, Dark honestly. Final Fantasy. Did you I notice... people dying. I I want like I want to see like it's gonna sound terrible out of context, Uh-oh. but like I'm actually excited to see them like like I said that kid gets splattered with blood and then that kid literally gets ripped apart. It builds their immune like, system. I think somebody actually commented. Somebody actually said or, or at some point um, for the trailer for mm-hmm. Final Fantasy 16, they're like, "Wow, Bloodborne 2 looks really good." Yeah, <laughs> like it's, I'm so glad that Square is allowing the t- the 14 team so much what's the word so much freedom because it's like before i would have never thought that we would get like a rated m final fantasy i feel like 15 got close in its themes a tiny bit but with this one like i said kid literally gets blood splattered on him dude gets literally stabbed like they're not being scared about any of this they're like let's go like let's make this violent let's make this dark fantasy and i am here for it like i can't stress that enough traditionally up to this point whenever there is violence like even if there's there might be like a tiny little bit a trace amount of blood but they'll just have like the blade go through and just like oh there's nothing or like the or the real big part is like off screen kings the like the the Kingsglaive film for Final Fantasy 15 had more blood than 15 had. Yeah, like King Kingsglaive, yeah. I I argue was way more violent. Like someone got literally murdered in Kings Kingsglaive. Spoilers for that movie, yeah. but there's a literal scene of somebody getting should have been part of the main game. Corpse. Yeah, like, that's and they good, like show her corpse like that, full on. That's a good. Um, note right there because literally um i think that's one thing that we need to see more in games is we have a, a adaptive environments that change depending on how you interact with them but one thing that we still aren't getting is um for at least not for all games but for some games is adaptive characters that um or even uh enemies and npcs that change with the environment depending on what happens to them you know and so it's like, like we also need adaptive franchises like i get that final fantasy has stayed what it has been for so long and that's fine there's been some final final fantasy games i don't like and some that i've like utterly fallen in love with but i also feel like the whole like and i I'm, and I'm not just saying the whole rated app thing but the idea that final fantasy has stayed this like rated t again not counting zero we don't talk about zero here no offense <laughs> we to don't zero, talk about zero it it's the Vita. final 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 fantasy has stayed this of course you know they've tried to go in in the 15 route they've tried to go in the whole like modern like because like how does 15 start a splash screen that says like this is fantasy made real or this is like this is like realized fantasy or something Mm -hmm. but with 6 16 i'm so glad that they're finally being like hey why don't we just uh rip a kid apart and i'm just like yes <laughs> like i'm like finally like, i'm um, like they're finally doing it. like they're finally how do we take how do we take final fantasy and game of thrones and put them together <laughs> honestly that's because it's like if they are doing this kick-ass time skip idea that like the last five minutes kind of hints at i'm 100 percent down Like, if this kid dies in the first, like, 20 minutes and, like, the rest of the game is this main character getting so angry that they just go, like, you know what? I'm going to spend my entire life 
finding the person that killed this kid and you literally grow up with this character i am here for it like count me the fuck in so you even might, just so, the trailer itself so count you, me the fuck in <laughs> so your theory is that it's going to be a story about about revenge and about yes. a i think it's going to be a very dark revenge story Ooh, and i think yeah. this is i mean you can joke you can say that 15 kind of had this because we know with like with like noctis's dad dying him like oh i gotta do it for for, for for my dad like yeah you can argue that that had this but i think this one is going for that straight like oh josh was dead he died in a terribly gruesome graphic way i'm not going to let this stand like i'm not going to let this go i'm going to follow this ifrit like this person that could turn into ifrit which oh my god metal gear solid five vibes right up in the head with the whole like flaming with like the, with the, the like vulgan style we don't talk about metal gear solid five story because um, it doesn't exist <laughs> it's just it's the story specifically basically what i'm trying to get at here is fuck yeah final fantasy is finally going violent and i'm here for it uh, like i'm what, here for this combat i'm here for this game i'm just here for it <laughs> one closing note on it um they had a boss in there that that scared me a lot uh how do you pronounce it the marlboro oh the weird like technically thing yeah it gave me ptsd because i i got the platinum in uh, final fantasy 7 remake and he's the final boss in that in that boss gauntlet you have to do on hard mode and i he's not even the hardest one i, I beat everyone else took me like 10 tries i get to him it's a breeze i got too cocky and i let him kill me how to redo it because of him i i don't oh, i don't no. want to fight that guy in 16 i'll avoid it if i can <laughs> fuck that just i'm so excited and i wish it was a launch title but i understand that it's not and also that that like title they have for it the whole like art oh my god just like it's i joke i i want a lot of games tattooed on me but if somehow in the near future i can get just that splash art of just ifrit and like phoenix going going at it just 100 <laughs> percent just it's i'm listen man i'm so hyped on it and also namora doesn't have his hands in it so we're probably getting it next <laughs> next year oh yeah no yoshi, p, yoshi, yoshi p runs a tight ship oh i have heard i have <laughs> heard and if the leaks were true that this has been in development for like two and a half years mm -hmm. i have a feeling we're legitimately getting this at the end of next year like That's i have amazing. a feeling that yoshi p is gonna be like get the shit out he's gonna be like get it done make it I, good uh, i'm just going to point it's... this out the whole trailer was in english yeah two two tits i believe uh tetsuya uh directed um final fantasy 7 remake didn't he he did to his he credit was... i think i think he did not do his usual job i think he did a, an amazing job well with, no uh, because he remake. was he was finishing up kingdom hearts 3 and working on that at the same time yeah yeah. Maybe so, he needs more distractions. He needs he needs a nap. <laughs> <laughs> Give this man a nap. Like let him sleep. Um, Kingdom Hearts is done for a while. Melody, Melody, Melody Memory is coming out. It's fun. Let fine. me tell you, it's it that looks like a fun game, and I'm there for the smidge of story that we're gonna be. Uh, you do know that it's the sequel to three, right? They have gone on record saying that that's the sequel to three. I know, I know. It's 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 the event. We're not getting a smidge story. We're getting a whole fucking novel. <laughs> Sticking so. novel shit. <laughs> all right, all right. Well, Kingdom, Kingdom Hearts ratio novel is a smidge in the story. I don't. I don't care. I'll lap it up. I, I need. I need all, all right. that juicy Same. story details. I know we can go on about. Final, I know when I say we, I know a certain someone who could go on about Final Fantasy Never for stop, for an entire stream. Uh, let, let's let's move on down the list. We're at the uh, almost two and a half hour mark. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, going down the list of uh, PS5 exclusives. Wow, that was like an hour ago. Um, there's Deathloop by Arcane, which uh, oh. we'll, we'll, we'll discuss something involving Arcane later. But I think they're they are one of the most under what's what's sort of look, looking for. Underrated. Uh, un most one of the most underrated uh, studios out there with making Dishonored and Prey alone. I completely agree. Please I don't play Prey. Please. I admit I admittedly don't know too much about Deathloop, but I am totally in completely based on the fact that I trust Arcane because they make nothing but quality. It looks it looks really fun. Yeah, it looks really good. I, I like that every single trailer that looks like they get more and more inspired and like more and more interesting. You see what that game is. It's, it I'm very interested good. in its uh, multiplayer as as 
aspect. Like, I can't wait to jump into people's games and just fuck them up. Like, be like, sorry, you were that close? Not today. <laughs> For what it's worth, this is also a timed exclusive. Six months, I also, believe. Also do because of some other news. We'll cover. Um, we already talked about God of War. Gran Turismo, does anyone like racing sims? Vroom, vroom. Yeah. I, if it's not Mario Kart or Crash, I, I'm good. <laughs> Damn. Uh, Sorry, yeah, Grand Turismo I, fans. I, mean, I, could, I could go What's with them good? or without them. It's, it's, it's just kind of like a chill genre for me. Yeah. Before, I like Forza Horizon more. That's about it. <laughs> Such enthusiasm. <laughs> <laughs> I, right. I will say one of the only one of the only games I played on my Xbox One when it was plugged in was um, I think I think it was uh, Forza Horizon, and I was taken aback because they said my name in the game. That's like <laughs> you're like me. Like you're talking to me. Like what's going on? Yeah. <laughs> like what? Like Fallout? I'm, I'm never so did lucky. It. Fallout oh. did it, and the like robot actually called me Sarah, and I was like, whoa. <laughs> I was like, oh man, that that's that's weird. Yeah. I, was like, I was like, that's weird. All right, I, I hate to rip you guys away from your favorite uh, genre of gaming from of all time, but uh, I, I, surprise! Wow, um, Horizon excited. Two. I I don't have too much to say about it aside from I fucking loved everything about the first game. It was a good. I never played the first game. I liked it. What? I thought it was very. Fun. It is. It is. Yeah. It's great. I just. I just. It's, I just don't. I just never saw the magic, and especially think, when it came out the same year that Breath of the Wild. Near autonomous. It, it was yeah, bad. It was, I was bad like timing. Wow, I haven't said yeah, that name in a minute. I'm with you, Jose. I, I absolutely loved that game. Um, uh, not to mention, it is one of like one of the bigger games that has a female protagonist in it, and that was like definitely a plus. And uh, but also the fact that like it's just this new, rich, open world that takes place in a familiar kind of setting which is america but it's like thousands of years in the future so and and the fact that we actually are getting a sequel i'm i'm freaking stoked for because they did leave it off on a kind of a uh a a weird there was a there was a cliffhanger at the end after the credits it was a little odd with one of my favorite actors of all time Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It is weird seeing that. The way that you see Arcane is the way I say I see Gorilla. Kind of, I feel like people. Oh, you you didn't you didn't say that when when uh, Corey was talking shit about Killzone. I that here here's the thing. People see them as just the Killzone company, which I mean that's fine. They made a lot of Killzone games. I remember playing Killzone Three on like the PS3 and just finding it was just a blast. Like I loved it, but I feel like people see them literally as just the Killzone company. But then they make stuff like Horizon, and they helped with Death Death Stranding too. Like I feel That's like true. They that was the same so engine. Much. Huh? It was the same engine. I was yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, well, no. So so while Kojima Productions was working on the game, Go- Gorilla had a team of like twelve people continuing to work on the engine and being like, "Hey, we we have just added this. We just added this," and they would go on conference call with koji pro and be like hey can you guys attempt to do something with 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 this can you change this and then and then the, the like 12 person team would like go and do that so and they while making horizon was also doing that yeah and there's like even people references like, yeah there's even references to horizon in death stranding and there's horizon and there's death mm-hmm. death stranding references in horizon i think even the really? stu- i think the yeah, studio yeah, head yeah. I th- he got promoted yeah. but the uh the former studio head of gorilla was a now character for, like, in, in death stranding in general i have a lot of i have a lot of friends that played um that played death stranding but did not play horizon so when you first they get to like, a network thing, going and, and they like, get the tall neck <laughs> yeah and they're like what <laughs> yeah <laughs> It's like, I promise it's actually not industrial. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But yeah, I, I loved everything about the story. Loved the world and the gameplay. I mean, I mean, ha- I forget what the name of the T Rex looking thing is, and I know they're not technically dinosaurs in the lore. They were very insistent about that uh-huh. uh, pr- prior to release. But th- it's a, it's a motherfucking T Rex, okay? Yeah, exactly. But fighting those was always a blast. Um, I I cannot verify or deny if I was in a play test, but prior to release. But um, here we go. I, I would say I would say the game was still probably a little rough around the edges in terms of presentation. 
Um, but I remember, and well, I don't remember because I cannot verify or deny. Um, <laughs> initially in the game, I heard that you could shoot arrows into NPCs' faces and that they wouldn't disappear. So you, so you could plug 20 arrows into someone's face and they're still running around town. And I would think that that would be very hilarious. <laughs> Uh, too good. Too good. All right. Uh, let's go down the list again. There's uh, Project Athea, which I'm not familiar with whatsoever. Anyone here? Is, is that the Square? Because I know last year during E3, Square showed this like demo for. They called it a demo. It was sort of like a. Uh, uh, oh, what the hell was that weird uh, Final Final Fantasy ish demo that was testing the uh, Luminous Engine? I don't know. Uh, can't remember the name of it, but they said that it's like a game being worked on by Final Fantasy veterans. And they're like, oh, this is a new Square Enix franchise. Like, there's there's not much out of it, just that this is something that Final Fantasy vets are currently working on. Right. And I think Nomura had a bit of a, like a tiny hand in it or something. Like, I just know that Square only showed like a little bit of it. And they were like, hey, this is just something that's super early in development, but a uh, Final Fantasy team is working on it. I think it's like a team headed by a Final Fantasy vet is working on it. Right. And for what it's like, worth, I'm playing in the stream right now. Yeah, like it's... Yeah, like it... Yeah, this is this is exactly it. Like, this is what it... This is it looks good. What it was. Oh, but yeah, it's like, oh, okay. this is like all test footage, I, like... I wasn't sure what you were talking about because I was like, I that totally slipped my mind. Project Athea. The name's not very great at the moment. Yeah, is what I'd and, say. and this really looks like a game that is a concept at this point, and they have like, besides this footage we're seeing, it looks like it, it, it looks beautiful, it looks gorgeous, but it seems like a game that's like very much in alpha right now. I'm not gonna lie. When they first showed that, my my dumbass instantly went with, "Is this Final Fantasy 16?" It, it looks like it, it. It looks like it. Like, like that was my first thought. Was Square was doing that whole, "Oh, this is 16 thing." We're just not seeing it as 16. This is this is interesting though because they specifically show her wearing sneakers, and so yeah. I think it's going to be a a, 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 a modern a modern day person traveling to a fantasy world which is i i haven't seen that in a game i don't think like if for a while an isekai isekai no yeah. don't bring isekai <laughs> into this please please all right moving down the list um i think we already discussed it a bit ratchet and clank for uh, for me I've, I've kind of been on and off with the series i think that they're really good games i wouldn't necessarily classify them as great or like a system seller but i am i'm particularly interested in this one specifically because it's kind of the front runner for the ssd tech with uh, loading in multiple uh that's true multiple planes at the same time yeah, because it has to do with interdimensional travel and everything um so the load the load times have to be instantaneous and i think that's i think that game specifically the way it's built is to just to uh put on display the ssd capabilities right any thoughts mesa yeah, while Sarah's um, snacking so, over I'm, there, <laughs> I'm not. I'm not that into Ratchet and Clank. Um, mm -hmm. I played the. Though I did play the 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 the, the one for the movie and loved it. The uh, like, oh, PS4 wow. one, the remake of yeah. the first. Yeah, game. that one. That yes. one was just like a remake of the first one. Yeah. I yes, I was. loved it too. Oh, I have to say about that game in particular, I. I don't remember if I played it on a pro, but that shit just looks like a straight up fucking Pixar movie. Yeah. It, it looks mm -hmm. phenomenal. It looks amazing. And so, yeah, I'm like, I'm excited for this one to be a good tech demo. Like, I, I really have much else to say besides, like, you know, I know the game's probably going to be fun. Um, I have a friend who's who's, who's hella into um, interaction and Clank that's uh, very excited for it. Can I just say though the one thing about Insomniac that's like annoying the shit out of out of me? 
is uh, every day on their Facebook, almost every day, they keep posting like resistance fall fall of man stuff, and I'm like, just announce another re- resistance game. Just please. just put out those games, re- uh, remaster. Like I'm just p- basic They're remaster selling. all three of them. I will buy it. Like I loved those games <laughs> yeah, growing resistance, up, and resistance every was day, good. every day they've been posting like screenshots, and I'm like, why do you keep doing this? Like I'm like, just I get it, Ratchet and Clank's important. But please, just release another Resistance game. Like, that's not that hard. Remaster the first three. People will buy them. I will buy them. Like, it's just like, stop. Do the same thing for Infamous. Infamous 1 and 2 are fucking amazing. Thank you. I love Second Son, too. Infamous 2 is the best one, by the way. I'm so terrified that because of Spider-Man, Infamous is done. Mm-hmm. I'm so terrified of that because I love those games so that, much. That's a Infamous different studio. That's a Sucker Punch. Sucker yeah, but Punch I mean, like, Sony a... might. Yeah, but like Sony might be like, why? Why we need to make another Super? Yeah, game? Infamous yeah, okay, that makes got sense. me to buy yeah. a PlayStation Three. That was the series that got me into the PlayStation Three. So when also, the series my, is super close to me. I'm in also, the big of shout out of uh, Second Son. Big shout out to the uh, infamous uh, Sony internet outage for two months because everyone got infamous one because of that. <laughs> yeah, people actually got to play infamous. Um, we were able guys, to play them. Do you guys by chance remember the um, the competitor game to infamous when when it prototype? came out? Prototype. Prototype. Not as solid of a game, but it is good dumb fun. It's, it's not garbage. It's just, it's just a less fun Hulk Ultimate Destruction. It's yeah. good yeah, like, dumb also fun. They tried to humanize its main character and it was so fucking weird. The second one had a better it's protagonist, like but it was much dumber. He literally Alex goes Murphy. like, I'm a human as he eats a person. Dude, you could you could play as an <laughs> old lady. I can't, I can't agree with this man. Dude, it was Watch Dogs before Watch Dogs. You could play as an old lady fucking throwing people into buildings and shit. Yeah. Excuse you, the old ladies in Watch Dogs legions look like good grandmas and my whole squad is going to be grandmas. But can they absorb people? It I don't was, know. Um, we'll find out. <laughs> I know you haven't played this game, Jose, but it basically like, if you... If if you play the game Carry On, it's that's. It's, oh, I have played it. Oh, you have. On, okay, perfect. Via the power of Game Pass. Yay! Um, it's on Game Pass. <laughs> it's it's the it's thing fun. is one of my favorite movies of all time. Yes, it's reminiscent of the thing, and then I also kind of thought of Prototype a little bit with that game. <laughs> ah, reverse right. horror games, man. Yeah. Going down. Uh, this is a game I admittedly don't too much about i'm gonna go and post the trailer in yeah. here it's a uh, returnal it's a housemark game which is if i is housemark the game that's traditionally known for making uh dual stick shooters like Rezo Rezo Gun? Gun. yes Rezo Gun. the best yeah, launch game Rezo Gun team. yeah which is insane to me because this one honestly looks really interesting and it's I'm I'm just all here for like space horror. Maybe that's like the dead space part of my heart that just constantly cries. Mm-hmm. But I'm here for for space horror, and this is exactly what this looks like. So I'm I just wish this was a launch game. <laughs> I'm excited to see what they do because it's such a drastic departure. Because I remember this um, people from the studio coming out saying like, "Oh yeah, the games didn't sell well, or we want to branch out and do things." But they were like already so fucking amazing at what they did. Like they perfected twin stick shooters so I'm, I'm curious to see how well they adapt to this but i'm confident in the team's ability to at least make interesting gameplay mm-hmm. mesa any thoughts um yeah just not really um you know uh just i you know, hope it's good um, I'm, I'm always a fan of space I am, i'm never tired of space we put more things in space space <laughs> mind. yeah just in general <laughs> Space is cool. Up there, man. not here. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I'll, I'll have to see more of it uh, as yeah. time progresses, you know. See, I'm that weird person that does fall for, like, CGI trailers. Like, if basically, if you can captivate me in, like, any way, then you have me interested. And this definitely did that. Like, a weird, like, ground Groundhog's Day space horror. Like, fuck yeah. Mark me. Mark, mark me down. Damn, my camera does not like me today. I think it's overheating. Yeah. I have my fan off specifically so the mic doesn't pick it up. Same. But, uh, damn. All right. Uh, what else is on my magical list that I can't uh, look at Sack, at the moment? Sackboy Adventures. I actually really like Little Big Planets. I, I don't. Do. Th- 
Yeah, that was definitely a fun. You have family members who don't like video games, but you can play this with them. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think the platforming was ever as good as like a Mario, but yeah. it had as a lot of charm to it. All as the little Nintendo, costumes. Every time I've touched it. You can turn him into Nathan Drake. <laughs> every, every time I touched it, I bounced off. So yeah. As a, as a little Nintendo. The only thing that's not clear is that uh, if it's going to have the same mechanics as Little Big Planet, where you can like create your own levels or whatever. Yeah. Or if it's just going to be like a one and done, uh, like sack boy adventure of its own fruition. All right. So that's the end of the list that I have compiled over here. And um, before we jump over to Xbox, I think it's it just kind of widely recognized across the industry that uh, Sony's first party is just basically universally amazing. It has a certain tier of quality that Nintendo and Xbox just simply don't have. So in, in that regard, I, I think if someone does not have access to a Sony console, they're just severely missing out on very on important 100%. games. Um, I think Sony also, at least to me, I've been a Sony person like a super long time. Sony was the first console to give us genre defining titles. You have Resident Evil, you have Silent Hill, you have Ratchet and Clank, you have Jack, Jack and Dexter, you have God of War, then you had the remake of, of God of War. Fucking Metal Gear Solid and then Death, and then Death Stranding down, down the line. I just feel like when people say, oh, I play PlayStation for the exclusives, you know what? More fucking power to you. So do I. Like, it's Play, PlayStation just has the better exclusives, and it has been for like three console generations. <laughs> four, even. I would argue all four of them. Like, X, X, Xbox is fine. Halo, Gears. I love Gears. I'm, I'm iffy on Halo. And with Microsoft buying up all of these companies, like that's fine and that's great but they will never be on sony's level when it comes to first party titles like studios like naughty dog like sony santa santa monica like it's you will never be on that level and like that's a really rough opinion but that's that is the truth to me no company will be on sony's first party level like microsoft can buy up all the damn companies they want to but it's like sony sony exclusives to me have never failed like they've all kicked so much ass like i just don't think anyone can really beat that right yeah. and i i think it's i think it's um i was gonna say that <laughs> that's really good logic for anyone who is uh open to uh you know all types of games but for someone i will say for someone like uh my cousin in particular my cousin chase he uh he, he's just like a diehard xbox fan and he's the kind of person that all he plays is like you know sports games uh call of duty and uh i love sports ball dude <laughs> you know stuff like that and he's like he's like xbox is just so much better and i'm like uh i'm sorry i can't hear you over the sound of all of these exclusives i can't he's, hear you over the sound <laughs> of kratos going boy yeah and, and I, he's just like but they're all boring i'm like that's no accounting for taste so it's so <laughs> weird to me that that it's so weird to me that the detractors and like yes sony kind of has a tendency towards like third person narrative games whatever but spieler just like so willing to like just openly dismiss them just like i don't know none of the sony games appeal to me i'm like motherfucker have you even tried them fun. right Fucker, exactly. the last of us isn't supposed to be fun <laughs> <laughs> no that's supposed i to had be a fun. very good time with those dogs <laughs> like you weren't supposed to have fun like that's the whole thing and i think that's why i love sony more is because they take risks mm -hmm. sony allows these types of titles because maybe the last of us two wouldn't have sold good I mean, Sony still gave it gave it a chance. Like, Cory Bala going up to Sony, going, hey, I want to remake God of War where Kratos is a dad. He is a bear. And <laughs> he actually has a personality. Like, um. I can't imagine Sony going like, uh, can't he just murder things? It's like, oh no, he murders things too, but he's also trying to be a dad when he's really not good at it. Mm -hmm. And especially yeah. the climax of that of that game with him literally just putting his hand on Atreus's shoulder. I was like, this is everything I could have wanted. Like, I was like, this whole game, this whole game, just that one small act, not him murdering everything else along the way, 
but just the one act of finally being a dad. Like, yeah. if you had gone up to Sony and said, hey, God of War, but dad, they would have been like, what? But yeah, I think got- it's definitely I think it's definitely Sony's willingness to invest in studios and trust them to know what they're doing mm-hmm. without getting too hands on. And they're, they're just willing to take risk on even smaller games. I think they've just created a culture that's uh, that just produces high tier quality. And of course, there's issues like crunch, um, which Naughty Dog is very yeah. notorious for. But yeah. that's a that's a separate issue aside from the end quality that it me, results. In. I think for me, um, like Sony exclusives are good, but like they just like I like like wrong wrong I like every Sony just about every Sony exclusive I've ever played. They're very Back very very good. Sorry? Don't bring up Nax. Oh, Nax. <laughs> I, I, I have that. From what I heard, Nax is actually pretty good. Um, um, it's just that like they just lack a certain. I don't know. Spirit. I feel like. <laughs> I guess I. I, I feels like they're trying to be something that I don't need it to be. In you what know? sense? Like narrative, gameplay, um, presentation, uh, uh, possibly presentation i think i think i think is, is a good chunk of it um like like they're, it feels like they're trying to impress me with how cinematic it is when all i want to do is press the button to move and then hit, hit the button and break the box or something um well, well like you know um like cinematic games are you know are, are fantastic i just I just want a different flavor every. Once. I think I agree with you to an extent. For for example, <laughs> I, think I want a different flavor every once in a while. For example, I can go back and play freaking Doom Eternal ten times in a row because it's just purely focused on gameplay. But when it's a story, I I don't feel the need to go back to as much. Um, like I've only been the new God of War once, and I'm entirely satisfied with my experience. I just haven't gone around to a second playthrough. In the same case with The Last of Us Two, like I'm I'm so satisfied with that experience. Also, I but it, it's not as mental capacity to play the last of us too yeah. <laughs> like i just don't have the mental strength man and it's like people can either see that as like a good thing or a bad thing to me i think it's most impressive when games can do stuff like that to you and i think that's why i'm i'm glad i trust in sony's exclusives because they allow they allow developers to do that yeah i, th- I think it's replayability like, is like a very important thing for games but See, I'll, I'll trade I'll, I'll trade replayability if it gives me a damn good experience i'm just like i'm so yeah. satisfied with that i don't feel the need to go back not well, because i'm just like i don't want to but it's just like i am so satisfied by what i experienced well yes maybe maybe it's just like what i'm looking from the game is just different than what you guys are looking for it's just that the experience that the initial experience just doesn't spark the same way i've had with other games that's all that's understandable after all, you don't like Kingdom Hearts, so you're good in my book. Boo! <laughs> Boo! All right, Kingdom so Hearts that the epitome of an experience. <laughs> all right, this is going on a little bit longer than I thought, so let me go and browse our topics. Mm-hmm. You know what? I think we might just do cover the Xbox exclusives and the acquisition okay, they we did. All right, so why can't I hold all of these Xbox exclusives? (laughs) Oh, wait, I'm not holding anything. Oh, no. All right, so here, here's the list I went ahead and uh, compiled. Uh, as Dusk Falls, I'm not aware of what that is. Anyone else? Uh, is that Um, the uh, oh, yes, it is the um. So there is a couple, which, by the way, please support this company. There is a company of game developers who left uh, Quantic Dream. Thank God they escaped. They, es- they escaped live. that cage? Yes, they escaped the literal cage and they went to make a, a, a development studio and Microsoft is giving them money to make their first title. And it looks like it's like... I like the style on it. Style, yeah. Where you are playing as a character who like watched her parents. I think I think they died in like right. in, in like a robbery, and right. she actually this goes one, yes. and finds the original like people who robbed and possibly killed them. And it just the art style because they because they've actually said a lot of the game plays in this art style, which I am here for. I love when companies do this type of thing and especially with the experience that tell me why gave, 
gave me and how much I just loved and adored. I love that, like, everything about this art stuff. style from what I'm seeing right now. <laughs> like I am so down for this. I am here for it. And I'm that's the one thing I will say about Microsoft is they are starting to give their exclusives that kind of freedom. I think they're able to do that also uh, explicitly because of Game Pass. They're not trying to sell copies. They're trying to add value to their product, mm -hmm. which is Game Pass. So they can take more risks with this kind of thing and they can fund them easy. I, I will say, I, I as someone who didn't get a chance uh, growing up to play the Fable games, I actually am really excited for Fable. Yeah. Yeah, very much same. I just wish we've seen more of it. I grew up on the Fable games, like they're my favorite Xbox titles. And the fact, because it's like, it's not that I don't trust play, Playground, but just like, I just don't want them to. How much you want to bet they're going to sneak a Forza car in there? <laughs> <laughs> just like walking through the forest and there's just a car. Here is your car, sir. All we the... do is Forza. All we do is cars. <laughs> <laughs> it's just cars everywhere. Honestly, I'm not too big of a fan of the Fable franchise, but I recognize that it's very important to a lot of people, especially people that grew up um, with an Xbox as their first console. So I'm very happy for them. And I believe the new ones are going to be more of an MMO, correct? Uh, I don't think so. I oh. haven't heard that. Uh, I'm not, yeah, I haven't heard anything about yeah. that. I guess I'm full of shit. <laughs> <laughs> All right, on to the next one, Avowed, which um, I admittedly had not seen this trailer before, but it's by Obsidian, and I just inherently trust Obsidian for making good things. Hmm. I don't what? remember no? much about Avowed. Okay, dude, the last games they put out, the last games they put out, fantasy. Last games they put out was what Pillars of Eternity, um, the first South Park game, Outer Worlds, and New Vegas. I, I, I trust the Outer studio. Outer Worlds for for what it was, but I've come to the king, king, conclusion that if it wasn't free because of Game Pass, I wouldn't have enjoyed yeah. it as much as I did. Yeah, I don't I think know. I would have bought. I don't think I would have bought it, but I probably. I, was, I am not a Fallout like, person, and that just plays like a Fallout game. So I was just kind of here, like, true. oh, I don't have to pay for it. I'm it's fine. <laughs> is the person that made obsidian good apparently was a sex pest so oh, oh yeah fuck that guy oh, yeah, and, no. uh, <laughs> and he's not he's left the company he's left the company okay well that's good then. but you know if he's the person that made obsidian <laughs> good oh okay. well, let's see let's see what the, let's see what the, let's see what they do um um without uh, Chris Avalon. I, I got excited for this trailer simply because I'm a freaking magic nerd and I love the fact that literally just the character drew a spell rune in the air and activated it like i just that did it for me it doesn't take much when it comes yeah. to magic and that does it for me <laughs> it's a really good skyrim vr mod like that yeah all right or next up down. look up those those uh, pictures of people playing skyrim vr at, at the, this, this e3 in the like see-through rooms and they're just all standing there like in weird poses <laughs> And, 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 and people were just like, well, you went into a see-through VR room because they're going to take pictures of you. <laughs> Looking just funky. All right, next up we have Everwild by Rare, which... This looks in interesting. It, I think Rare has really pulled themselves around because uh, obviously, you know what, they made Banjo-Kazooie. It's not the same team whatsoever. All those people are over at Playtonic now working on ukulele. Um but they've really turned themselves around in the public conscious with uh, Sea of Thieves, which doesn't seem like my particular game. I haven't played it, but people seem to keep going back to it. I, I adore Sea of Thieves, yeah. Sea of Thieves is really appealing. It's one of those games that I always like bounce back to every now and then. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's it's funny because um, uh, the the Sea of Thieves was it was uh, announced at the same E three as Skull and Bones, and then Skull and, and Bones I, never came out. <laughs> yeah, I was I was the uh, I was the only person in my friend group that was excited for Sea of Thieves while everyone else was talking about Skull and Bones. And Skull and Bones vanished, <laughs> and guess who was like, "Hey, you want to play Sea of Thieves? Sure." So yeah, want to pet the dog? You could pet the dog <laughs> now. I love this art style. Oh yeah, it's beautiful. See, this is this is definitely this is where we get into the into the line of, of games being good because they like they 
invite a new concept or they invite like a new art style or something like you know around those lines yeah yeah because i swear rare has come out and said that this that combat isn't the focus of this game the the focus is bringing the forest back to life which is what i'm all here it's a good change of pace and that's what i really like about that's what i'm really honestly excited about if we have to get you know into what is exciting about the future of gaming is that the future of gaming is pure art it's just it, it, it's mm-hmm. little, to call a game good is so um these days now and as we're going forward is so like um what's the word i'm looking for it, it's so subjective uh depending on how what kind of games you even like or you know what your interests are as a gamer um and just like looking at this trailer it's it that's a very good example of that i think I, going back to the point, I think uh, being on Game Pass and having that support from Microsoft just allows them the freedom to, to do what they want. They can take those risks. Exactly. And I think that's one thing. We, Which we, is weird thinking yeah. that uh, being under, not under the thumb, because that implies, you know, t- a little bit of a tyrannical rule, but uh, being under the Microsoft umbrella, one of the biggest companies in the world, is actually giving them more freedom and the budget to do that freedom versus like maybe even in an indie studio. Well, Microsoft Microsoft is it's like Microsoft is aware that they're making they're making a console and they want their gamers to be able to play as many games as possible. And that, that's the whole point of, of owning a gaming console. Well, they're even moving away from that as a concept. They're just going towards like full on subscription service. Yeah. So and I mean, who knows? Maybe Sony will end up there eventually. But for for what we can see right now sony is is definitely just wanting to you know make as much money from the games as possible right yeah Uh, let's see i think we already covered fable pretty well unless anyone else has any other thoughts Mm -hmm. okay next one uh the next (laughs) the the most highly anticipated title from everyone here uh forza since we love cars so much <laughs> I need a horizon at the end for me to even care a little bit. I recognize its quality; it just does nothing for me. Car goes exactly. broom. Exactly. Check, check your blind spots. Make sure it hasn't Bad officially been. Beep, be- beep, 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 beep. <laughs> I don't care about racing games. I can barely drive myself. I don't need to be shown in the game how terrible I am. Oh God. It hasn't been officially announced, but I just went ahead and put Gear 6 here. Like I, like I said, I, I don't think... I think the story and um, mm-hmm. the coalition takes on Gears, they're oh. they're good, but they're not phenomenal. Well, like, so, so Rod Ferguson choice? left. Yes, Rod, he's now Rod at Blizzard, Ferguson's I believe. He's working on Diablo, which has yes. me kind of excited. But he, but he also said when he left... He said that he would never leave that studio unless he knew that the team had a solid direction in, in where to take the Gears fr- franchise, right. story and gameplay wise. So that kind of gives me a little bit of hope because that means he felt confident enough to leave that franchise in the hands yeah. of this group. Because oh, I, yeah. I mean, obviously, Jose <laughs> knows this. Gears is very close to my heart. It's. I have I'm like it's like inked into my skin like it it's is literally favorite, close to your heart yes it's uh it is my favorite Xbox franchise of all time I literally own the Gears 5 Xbox X console like I care so much about this franchise and I personally love what they have done I love 4 I adored 5 I'm very curious in how they're going to do six, especially since five ended with an an an, yep. an actual player choice. Which, uh, which you and me, I think we disagree yeah. on the choice. Uh, really? Wait, wait, do we want to go into what happened? Um, Joey? I mean, I mean, it's it's an, it, to me, it's one of the biggest spoilers in the Gears franchise. Next, because oh, yeah. like everyone knows that Dom died. Like everyone yeah. knows. It's everyone sad. knows. They that, play yeah. Bad World in the background. It's terrible. It's just it's it's Ron. It but was like, a big the sad moment. Gears Five. I went in completely blind because I was actually on vacation when the game came out, so I couldn't play it. And no one. I'm very proud of all of my friends. No one spoiled it no one said a word to me because people knew that I would literally rip their heads off. Like everyone was like, just let her play it. Just let her go. Of course, I bawled my eyes out. I was a literal mess. I had a panic attack. It was not fun. (laughs) 
but I think that just goes to show how well that they've crafted these new char- characters because no one's going to replace Delta Squad and that's fine they're not trying to these are new characters mm-hmm. these are new people that we are following also if you had told little like 10 year old me that Gears of War would have a female main main character ever like ever I would have lost my mind I loved everything about my, my only because um, I actually started replaying again the other day I don't see so they start off the game from um, I forget her name Kate correct yeah yeah, yeah. you start off from Kate or Kate. cat kitty cat whatever <laughs> um, Ashley Birch <laughs> or is it Laura Bailey? I forget. It's uh, Laura. Okay. Might it's be. Laura. Yeah, because she got nominated at the Game Awards for that. Okay. But so yeah, you start off the game from her perspective, but for the entirety of Act One, you're still playing through JD's eyes, which I kind of see as them saying like, "Oh, don't worry, Chuds, you can you can still play as a big muscly man before we ease like you into JD. this." Leave him alone. <laughs> I like I like Kate better. Well, Leave the story. Alone. The, I'm I, fine with him in four, but the the yeah, story's not I about him in, in five. The I story's about so. Kate. I completely agree, and I think the character development that they tried to do with him was really iffy because a lot of it happened in the novel that came out after the game came out so it was like really weird and especially with gears tactics following kate's dad like they're leaning so heavily on her that Mm -hmm. i would be surprised if in gear six you don't play as anyone but kate i'd be down for that because I'm, I'm, I'm they're just so making gl- her out to be the main character. Like she is literally I'm, the face of the Gears franchise now. I need to. Just nuts. I'm just so I glad that Dell's going to be alive in the next game. Excuse you. Don't remind me, please. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Yeah. I. I wow. saved my son. Wow. No, Dell was. <laughs> Dell was with you the whole time. J- JD reason. ditched you. I had a full reason, but I don't want to be here too long to explain okay. it. <laughs> just, re- just real, real quickly, wow. the reason why I chose Dell, I thought it would create a more interesting uh, consequence in the story if JD were to die, because Marcus has to deal with that. If G- De- I, if Dell had chose, died, it would not have been as interesting. I chose G- G- uh, JD to live because I figured that would wake him the fuck up, and it did. So I was well, the big the big laser woke him up pretty well. Del didn't need to be woken up. He was already there. He was he was part of the team. He was working hard. He I know smart. it hurt me so hard. It made me cry and have a panic attack. Leave me alone. I feel so. You know what? Let's just congratulate Corey for being a champ because he hasn't played it. <laughs> I was just like never, what? I was never really into like I played the early Gears games, but I was never really I never really fully followed it. So um, actually. Um, yeah, for me, um, because I never had an Xbox, I have an Xbox One. I went through um, all of the Gears games with my uh, hey. friend, and I was like, "Oh wow, this series was actually fantastic! <laughs> uh, this series is actually amazing." Plug, plug to my own blog here. I wrote a blog post <laughs> on how the first Gears is literally a survival horror game. Oh, absolutely! No and then one, four even no kind of echoes that same pacing. Yeah, and I mm. literally wrote like a twenty-paragraph long blog essay where I'm like, "Gears is a survival." horror series and no one believes me and that's fine i feel like that's how a lot of survival horror games start out and then when they become sequels they go into the more actiony yeah uh, i would i would argue know. that three kind of took t- took the game away from that survival horror stuff but Hogan i would say like two was pretty damn four, action-packed four yeah. brought it back Four Two has some like, back. like stupid and like the best kind of stupid like over the top action set pieces. Well, you could say that Resident Evil Four did that same thing. Oh, absolutely. That's why I love Resident Evil Four. <laughs> oh, but, uh, just a yeah, quick just, note: just, uh, also, the PC uh, Tactics is a launch title for the Xbox. The uh, PC versions of uh, Gears Four and Five are fucking amazing, and it they play so goddamn well on PC. I can actually snipe people now because I'm garbage Gears at it with War control. People, please, that is oh, all I ask. Gears of War is 100 uh, worth it. It's I not played, just I meaty, played. muscly dudes. There is heart. It's heartless for a judge. Oh yeah, of course. Yeah, I played Gears with an Australian, so playing Gears with anybody else would mean I have a stable connection to that game. So, <laughs> yeah, hopefully. <laughs> I think we already mentioned Gears Tactics a little bit earlier. It's it's, uh, it's a real damn solid XCOM mm-hmm. like. Um, the side missions are not side missions if you have to do them. Plus, it's canon, so if you're interested in Gears lore at all, you need to play it because <laughs> there's shit that happens in it. 
but the ways that it changes the way it changes the overwatch ability from uh, xcom took it took a really long time for me to get used to so in that regard it's slow but it really forces you to like rush things too also you have to reload which to me is kind of annoying i'm like i do that in gears already it's a tactics game i don't have time to reload the game's like no please turn i'm like no did you ever get around to playing it mesa uh, tactics? No, I never did. Unfortunately, it's still on the list. Still on the list. I just have. Well, it's no day one on Game Pass. <laughs> no no excuses. Long ass <laughs> list. All right, uh, Halo Infinite. I don't I might be the biggest Halo fan here. Don't care. And you don't care? I don't care. Man. I care. Halo's a great yeah, franchise. Halo. You know what? Four right, had a good Corey story. Five, five Corey understands. Five had a just shrugged. Hey, story. Hey, story. Five had a five had a lackluster story, but the multiplayer was fucking on but point. That is the best playing first person shooter to date. <laughs> Hands down. It's great. But five, five had Nathan five Fillion so in good. it, so it's okay. No, you know what? Nathan Fillion needs his own game, his own Halo game. Please give and, Buck his own game. Buck. I will buy it. And the bucket and. I, I, I know we were, we were going to save it towards the end, but uh, let Machine Games make the next Halo game starring Nathan Fillion. That's all I'm saying. They made Wolfenstein. They would do it oh, justice. I, I love would just, their I would just like game. to say, as this going through this list is like is most most of these games or series I don't follow right anymore. Um, but with Halo. Uh, I will solidly, solidly still say that Halo 2 is the best Halo game ever. I think it might yeah, be the best the, playing the, that one um, the early after it's five. Alt, alt rock songs. In yeah. It, oh, which God. is the other best thing ever. For me. Yeah. The best for part me, of that game. For me, as someone who went through the entire series in like a year for the first time, I think Halo 3 is just a little bit better. I would but man, now you know, like three, the three's a bit, three's a bit and all of a sudden an incubus but, comes comes on and you're like, what is happening? But that multiplayer <laughs> in Halo, but that multiplayer in Halo Three was not okay. It was what? It was it compared to Halo Two. I don't know. Everything was just. Rock I, I agree with Halo you. Spe- I agree with you specifically because of the BR because it is it is not hit scan in three. It's um it's a projectile, and that really throws it off. That's why two felt so good. Mm-hmm. Which is why you should play Halo Five. But two's my favorite. But two's two's the second favorite. Man, so for me, I, it's Reach. I hate every Halo game, but Reach. I, just like Reach, I don't like Reach. Heart. I just have. I have. I like. I like the story. The 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 uh, recoil that they put in there. Nope, not in my Halo. I just have a nostalgia with Halo Two because um, I remember going to a blockbuster uh, nice. for a midnight release of Halo Two and staying home from calling in sick from school the next day to p- purposely to play that game. Um, it, it was yeah it was just when when you're when you're going through the ship and it's just exploding and you have the freaking heavy metal and all blow me, music blow, and just blow like, me away from breaking breaking benjamin's plane in the background yeah. and i'm just like hell yeah like, for what I'm it's worth chief is back. <laughs> for what it's worth in the remaster they uh they replaced that with my new favorite band which is oh uh periphery it's the guitarist he he wrote some tracks for there oh, nice. so if it sounds like old genty then uh that that's why but if you turn it oh. back to normal graphics you you, you get the original song this, this is true <laughs> which Speaking i totally did i'm also I very like in the background like i am a shadow oh, on God. the wall <laughs> Does it so you. good, man? And also, never forget that Seven uh, Eleven uh, sold Halo Three. I found that out re- recently. Oh, wow, they funny. sold copies of it, or that yeah, was like the big mountain thing. When it came out, you, you could pre-order game. You could pre-order Halo Three at Seven Eleven. That's amazing. I, that was like their first uh, test at selling games. The oh. internet history, it's great. Um, I'm really glad they delayed Infinite because it was admittedly looking rough, and a lot of that can be um, attributed to like to like look. That's true. We did get we got Craig, <laughs> but it's attributed to. Um, uh, from what I've heard, it's, it could be, it could have been a bad time of day for when they sh- for when they shot that footage, where the shadows just weren't doing the, their job that they should have been, as well as just like admittedly poor looking textures. Because um, it was like six months before they'd shown that they announced like the creative director of um, of Infinite had left, and like having someone leave that close to launch is uh, is not a good sign. 
So if they, I, I just want them to take all the time they need um, to make a better product, I can wait for it. I'm not in a rush, especially since uh, four and five were relative disappointments. Yeah, you know, five besides its gameplay, yeah. Because five's gameplay is like, it's great. Come on, Nathan Fillion. You know what you got to mm-hmm. do. Hit him up. Please and come had, back. Um, Mike Coulter, not voiced by Mike Coulter. Oh, God. Wait, he didn't, he didn't voice he didn't, himself? He didn't voice himself. I didn't himself realize because, that. Because I'm pretty sure, I remember reading, I'm pretty sure he had, there was a scheduling conflict with Luke Cage. So they had someone else voice him. Oh, that's funny. I didn't realize. Oh, my God. I just saw him and I was like, is that Luke Cage? Or I was like, I, yeah. None I of us remember, said anything about I, the voice. I remember playing it and thinking, like, that doesn't sound like him, though. And like, yo, it's not him. <laughs> I mean, Nathan Fillion doesn't voice Cage uh, 6 during the Forsaken DLC. That's because he's weird. dead. Well, no, no. Like, he, uh, Nolan North voiced Cage during that DLC. I will forever appreciate because, the option like, in Saints Row 3 when you pick your voice, one of the options is just literally- Nolan lit- North? It's just literally Nolan North. <laughs> <laughs> All right, moving on. Uh, State of Decay 3. Have you guys played any of the other I State have. of Decay games? I have. Oh, you know what, Corey? <laughs> yeah, sorry. You, Corey, you've played a game on the Xbox list. I you- know, what? No, okay, so yeah. I've never finished the State of Decay game. You can't I, finish the State of Decay game. No, that's true. Uh, I played the first one and I played the second one and I love them both. I think they're incredibly amazing open world uh, zombie, like a fresh take on zombie games. I love the idea that you can build up your own compound and, and rescue people and bring all these different characters into your compound to make it better and that you actually have to go out and find bigger uh, spaces and clear out zombies it's just it's 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 to me it's 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 a nice reprieve from the stereotypical like uh story-based zombie apocalypse game that we've been getting over and over and over again um and state of decay state of decay three just looks like more of that but crisper and much bigger and i can't wait (laughs) i've only ever played the second one and um for me i kind of wish that there was a bit more of a narrative hook because basically everything in there is randomly generated yeah but it is a damn fun game to play with friends like some of my best gaming memories and I, i only played it like recently like in the last year or so but you can get in some really fucked up situations and it it's just a good time yeah it's just it, it's definitely a, a, a game to play with friends online it's definitely one of those games my only real like solid critique of it would be that even two is severely lacking in presentation and it's pretty buggy which mm-hmm. admittedly can lead to some pretty funny things with your car flying through the air oh, but yeah. uh, uh hopefully they polish this one up i think so i th- I, I mean one would hope so <laughs> hopefully they don't rush it <laughs> Mesa, have you had a chance to play it? Or, or play not, any of the others? Um, um, I've State of the K is a special state a special game of uh, of uh, installing and just not playing at all ever. <laughs> Was that on your ex Oh I'm sorry, go ahead. Uh, it's just it's just it's just unfortunate time and I just never had a chance to play either of them despite downloading them and getting ready to play both of them. I just never did. Let's play it on PC. Yeah. Let's do it. Oh yeah, let's all play it on PC. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, yeah. Sarah, have you touched it whatsoever? Yeah. They, 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 they just aren't my the thing. So yeah, I, w- I was leave me. <laughs> I was hesitant to jump into it because stuff like Daisy and Rust don't appeal to me whatsoever. But uh, it's not exactly like I don't hold it like in high regard. It's more just uh, it's it's fun. Yeah, it's like a survival sim, basically. It's not as hardcore about it either, where you have to like, I guess, do you have to eat food? No, that's just for health. There's uh, like some management stuff back at base, but it's yeah, not I don't, It's not as anal about it. I don't think there's a hunger meter. Uh, there, mm, I think there was a dehydration meter though. I, I don't think so. I think you could get tired and you have to go to bed before your mom yells right. at you. Oh yeah. You, if you use a character too much, you get tired. Your health does permanently go lower if you if you're out too long. 
um, or if you use a character too much. But um, other than that, if you just let him rest and switch to a different character, then you're fine. All right. Um, I have only played like the first 10 minutes of the predecessor to this game, uh, but you guys seem pretty enthusiastic about it. What do you guys think about Hellblade 2? So, oh my god oh my god <laughs> when, they, <laughs> when they announced this game i was just so i obviously by my name i i love celtic everything just the celts the the lore all of that stuff anything to do with it the fact that they are actually making a sequel to this game surprised the crap out of me because I thought, like, the first... No spoilers, scene... please. No, no, I'm not going to oh, say no. any spoilers. No. Uh, you need to go into Hellblade Blind. Yeah. So, the, but I, I, I was... I was just going to... Yes, definitely wear headphones. Mm-hmm. It's meant for that. Um, mm-hmm. But I was just going to say that it surprised me because it, it, it came off as a game that was a one-and-done type of thing. Mm-hmm. Like, it, it, it came off as, like, more of a... An in, it definitely an indie kind of experimental game almost. Um, so I didn't, I, I honestly didn't expect a sequel is what I'm saying. So to actually jump off of that, I'm going to actually talk about a different aspect of it. I suffer from mental health issues. I, I suffer from PTSD and, and anxiety and that kind of thing. And Hellblade hits me really close to home because it's the first game I've played where there's a main character who acts like who acts like me, who deals with the same things that I deal with on a daily basis. So the fact that it did get a sequel, I was very excited about because I feel like the first game was a story of someone realizing their mental health issues, while the second game is someone who is coming to terms with them while while also learning to overcome them in their own way. And I think that that's a story that one, the first game has never been told in a, in a video game before. And I think it was handled so well done and so just with grace and poise that I, that again, the whole idea of a second game focusing on someone not getting over their mental health issues, but learning to adapt to them and learn how to overcome them definitely hasn't been told either and just the fact that microsoft is giving them the chance to do that and also running the game on the latest tech possible like if if this is to be right this is the first xbox game that's going to be running on unreal engine 5 and what it can do with this game and what hellblade does just specifically for me and for thousands of other people who play games out there who just have never seen somebody like them. It definitely means a lot to know that we're getting a sequel and I am very, very, very excited for it on a personal. Just the, level. Just, just, like um, putting putting the other, the other uh, things that it displays aside, just the mere fact also that, cause I suffer from uh, anxiety um, is that uh, they do display a form of anxiety in that game that is like it it's so it's so real it just I, I don't want to say anything else because it's going to spoil yeah. it but I just when, when so I have heard about it that's been yeah. that's been one of the main talking points yeah. is that it does a great job about covering these issues the one thing I will say is you know the game is important when it's first credits that roll across the screen is is a mental health ad, ad, ad advisors yes yeah. that's the first credit that you see as soon as you start the game you do not see a title you do not see game game director and I will say there's a button in the menu that says if if you feel like you suffer from anything shown in this game please click here and you click it and it sends you to a, a link that gives you numbers to find uh to find a therapist for you to for you to talk to oh, and wow. it sends you to a link that has like oh if you're not in the U- U- united states and you're playing this this is who you contact like it is Damn. It's so is 100 percent a a game that shows a, a side that i know Never thought games could touch but it does it in such a way that i can I, i've had a few friends play it and they've come back to me and and they've said i get it i get it now i get what you what you go through and that means so much right to have a game to have a game do that and i would also I it's would, not that long it's like five hours people you don't have a fucking excuse yeah it's like five I hours would, long. I, 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 every time i play that i just play it at a different a bad point in time yeah sorry Oh, yeah. I uh, think it's powerful that it's able to get that message across, and that's why representation of issues it fucking matters because you get in the hands of somebody that is ignorant to it, mm-hmm. and if they're willing to experience it, they can walk away with a better understanding of what people go through. And I would add, I would add to that as well. It's like 
aside from that, I, uh, I, I'm one for like, you know, extra, extra sort of content, like behind the scenes stuff and all that stuff Oh yeah. on the menu. There is like a documentary basically uh-huh. talking about, um, talking about the behind the scenes of making up the game and stuff like that. Um, and I thought that was a really nice touch because, uh, it, they talk about the medical side and, and the, um, the research that they went through for this game, you know? Also, um, when, when the game made profit, all of their profits that they have made have gone towards the mental health charity that they use to help oh, them. Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. Like, create the game. Like, like every profit that they have made off of Hellblade, up, as soon as they made profit, that extra profit went to that, and it's still going to that. So it's like, they did not make this for, as the kids say, clout. They made this because they wanted to. They wanted to experiment they wanted to show something that's not often shown in video games also i'm sure Corey, since you're so into celtic men i didn't realize this celtic warriors were the first people to acknowledge mental health not in the best way mm-hmm. <laughs> like not in the best way no, as yeah. Hellblade shows no. but I, they were the first to actually acknowledge that it was a thing and if I'm, i remember correctly celtic just, warrior has 1400 attack points stop <laughs> I'll play my trap card on you. I swear to God. <laughs> just, no, I just think that the fact we're getting a Hellblade sequel is amazing. And plus, they have said they would never do a Hellblade sequel unless they had an idea that was good enough to put onto like to warrant the sequel. Yeah, I just I just don't know how. The, I'm, I'm not going to say anything, but I just don't know how they can make it better. It's just like. I'm grounded. I just. <laughs> All right, we, we got to move on because we're going very long. Uh, does anyone yeah. buddy, want to talk about Scorn? I'm good. Sorry, Scorn. Yes. Corey has decided. <laughs> Wait, yes, you do. Oh my yes, God, Geiger Horror, please. Please. Like, y'all don't understand. Scorn has been in development for like seven years. Is that oh, the wow. game that's that freaking uh, Easy Allies are always promoting? Because they're like, yes. uh, it is the weird Geiger and like, they, they do not hide this. They even said on their Kickstarter page, we are heavily inspired by like HR Geiger and his and his like art and his work. No one knows anything about this game. It was originally only supposed to be a PC exclusive. The company was about to run out of money because they had put so much time and effort. Like, I think it was only a three, a three man team. It was like a concept artist, a, des- a, a designer and someone else. And then Microsoft just dropped money on them and they were like, we can finish the game. And it's an Xbox exclusive. And I can't wait to see that gross metallic phallic thing running on an Xbox Series X. I am here for it. Ew. Like literally that, the like that, background art. They should on put my that computer. quote on the back of the box. Yes. Yeah. The uh, background art on my computer is one of the concept art pieces from it. Like it is. I don't think anyone's ready for this game. I really like, remember seeing early trailers of that game. And then I and then it just like never came out. And then I was like, oh, what happened to it? Yeah, it's literally because they ran out of funds and yeah. they were working on it uh, literally on their free time. And then Microsoft was like, hey, we need horror exclusives. Isn't Money. That literally, isn't that like literally your... Speaking of horror out? exclusives. Okay. Oh, yeah. uh, it, I mean, it's, it's again, no one knows the plot of, of Scorn. Like no okay. one knows anything. They're just like, hey, this is a weird, creepy Geiger horror. And I'm like, you had me at Geiger horror. So... You were saying, Jose, about oh, speak, <laughs> speaking of horror exclusives, uh, the last topic of the night is that Microsoft has bought ZeniMax, the parent company of Bethesda. And uh, I'm just going to read off the games that are some of the games that are included in that, which is Dishonored. That are now Wolf- owned by Microsoft. Everyone yeah. keep that in mind when you hear this. Dishonored, Wolfenstein, The Elder Scrolls, uh, Fallout, Doom, Starfield, which is the new uh, Bethesda game, um, Evil, The Evil Within, see, it's horror related, and Prey. And every single one of these games reviews critically. These are, I, I wouldn't say Dishonored or Wolfenstein or, or System Sellers, same with Evil Within or Prey, but they are damn high quality. Mm-hmm. And having these day one on Game Pass is, that's just one more reason I'm why I recommend people get that's the game ever again 
No, I mean, it, that, that just means that we're not going to get uh, 80 different versions of the same Elder Scrolls game anymore. No! <laughs> Somewhere Todd, Todd Howard cries, realizing he can't, play, he can't push Skyrim on the phones. <laughs> I Sorry, think... you can't play Skyrim on your Alexa. <laughs> no, you can. Oh my God. You can play yeah. Skyrim on your Alexa. You can. Oh God! Yeah, you can voice control Skyrim, man. It's it's fucking everywhere. Oh, like it's man. everywhere. You cannot escape Todd Todd Howard's like weird smiling face. I like, think this there. is a this is a phenomenal buy for uh, for Microsoft, even though it was uh, seven point five billion, which is more than what uh, Disney paid for Star Wars. <laughs> it's twice the amount. Wow! But uh, Elder Scrolls and Fallout by themselves are going to freaking sell. Also, Doom don't sells. forget that uh, Starfield is actual Todd Howard's like next game. So yeah. that's why people are most excited for it because Todd has actually had his grubby little Todd Howard paws on this, and he's actively <laughs> developing it. Like this is his, this is his baby. So I will say, <laughs> I'm sorry, go ahead, Corey. Uh, I was going to say personally, I'm I'm excited for the uh, for the um, possibility of an Evil Within three. Same. Um, See that that's that's probably what excites me more even more than having like Fallout or Elder Scrolls Day One on Game Pass. It's that Evil Within Dishonored. Wolfenstein and Prey, they didn't sell like gangbusters, so it was looking but they pretty. They still un- have dedicated fan. Yes, they, it, fan they reviewed too. critically, but it wasn't looking as if that they were going to get any sequels to them. So th- that excites me because I love uh, every single fucking game on this I can list. See them making a third one. I, I don't count Young Young Blood. As, I, they've they've as already talked. They've already talked about making a third one well, so. because Young Young Blood ends on a very big cliff hater. Well, I didn't also, play it. I did not like the gameplay. Also, I, uh, I loved it. I played it in co-op. It was great. Yeah, but it's, you like Kingdom Hearts. I just, I just finished two. Uh, I just Ouch. finished two. Young Blood's next on the list. So yeah, yeah, it is. It definitely ends on a cliffhanger. So if they weren't making a th- a, a third game, I would be utterly baffled. All I'm saying is that uh, the Evil Within is the closest thing we have to having a Silent Hill game. And Close, it's a very, yeah. it's a very definitely hard the time. Second one. I it's think it's def- the second one. It's, it's a, a good mix between Silent Hill and Resident Evil. It's a very rough time to be a Silent Hill fan these days. So, damn. I mean, <laughs> you have at to least go on a more bummer. people will be able to play The Evil Within once it lands on Game Game Pass. I'm sure because I feel like not many people gave that game a chance. Yeah, I don't think the first game is very like solid. Cool. The second one's cool. fucking cool. great. Generation. No, the second one's like, amazing. Honestly. Yeah, it was way yeah. better. Second the game is a lot of fun. Like what? Well, like what else could like, like, uh, as like a like the, the delta of quality between one and two? What is there anything else that comes this close? Uh, in terms of like how big of an improvement it was? Yeah. Um, I know people kind of often point to like Uncharted one to two, but it wasn't necessarily yeah. that one was bad. It's just that two it's... took it to a new level. Yeah, I feel Resident like it's so much more four. of a fun. Yeah, the Evil Within, <laughs> the Evil Within was definitely like when that was the only one that existed. It was it was okay um, because it was like, oh, this is kind of like Silent Hill meets Resident Evil, you know? Type yeah, like thing. this is. It was kind of frustrating to play at times, just with, with the way it was designed. This, yeah. this was like Shinji Mikami's next baby, like yeah. the father of survival horror. Like this was his next game. Yeah, and then but then Evil Within Two came in and added like an open world quality to it. Yeah, which was ah, I loved that. It was great. I was like, you could explore the whole town. Yeah, and so. they also say the evil with like someone says the words the evil within in the first like ten minutes. Yeah, and you're like, someone said it. Someone said the thing. <laughs> I I will say if I was a if I was a PlayStation only gamer, I would probably be pissed off by this because it's just like, well, fuck, I can't play this. And I and I know people are speculating whether Microsoft will put uh, specific games from this list onto uh, Sony consoles because obviously they'll they're going to sell. But there's no way you pay seven point five fucking billion dollars yeah. just to hand you it over to the competition. That. This was you a power move, dude. But, but Minecraft. Yeah, uh, yeah, but that, on everything. Minecraft was already out, and, and that's another point: is that Sony has historically, yes, they buy studios, but they create new IPs. Whereas this is kind of simply just take. While it is giving this on Day Pass, 
on uh, Day Pass, Game Pass on day one, uh, which is a benefit to uh, Xbox gamers or anyone just uses Game Pass. And for PS4 gamers, it's effectively just taking that option away from them, saying like, yeah, these were going to come to you, but now we're going to take it off the table. Well, yeah. did you not hear the rumor that went around that Sony was trying to buy Starfield exclusivity? I did not hear that specifically, yeah, but I'm going to so, assume that's off the table. So, well, so before yeah. this, it, it came out that before Microsoft bought Beth- Bethesda, Sony was was actually bidding, just like offering money to Bethesda to make Starfield a, a PS5 ex- exclusive. Right. And yeah, I, I believe that because fuck, Sony got Final Fantasy 16. Like that ain't coming out on anything else. Mm. Like, Isn't that rumored whoa, whoa, whoa. to be a time a timed exclusive? No. Or uh, I think it's console exclusive. It is. Console okay, exclusive. can I can I just say it's not releasing I, anywhere else? I understand what the term console <laughs> exclusive is, but that is such a fucking misnomer. By definition, it should mean it is only on console, not on this yeah. specific console and PC. Yeah. Oh, it's not yeah. coming out on PC either. Yeah, it no, is. it's a console exclusive. Yeah. It's coming to PC. No, so people question Square after that little like also coming to PC thing. Oh, you're them. right. That's and, right. And yes. Square flat out said we we have no. Ah, uh, they're just hiding that. Someone game. fucked up. <laughs> uh, fucked I don't up. believe it, especially that, that with ha- like Microsoft doing something as big as buying. Bethesda. That happened with so uh, getting like Final Fantasy console exclusive makes total sense. Well, wait, wasn't that for uh, Demon Souls where they said they accidentally put PC and the uh, no final yeah. final Final Fantasy also said also coming to PC at the bottom of the screen. I mean, there's a, there's like an error where you can accidentally like put like an extra character, but uh, that seems like a pretty big mistake to happen. I mean, I truly believe well, we that it's a template. console exclusive. I don't believe it's coming to anything else. Oh yeah, I agree you know, with you. You got, you, got the, you got the video file, you just put it in the crossfade. Oops, wrong video file, you know? <laughs> and then you find out like while the conference is going on. like That yeah. whole that whole thing that was tested by uh, all of upper management. Oh, uh, yeah, that happens all the time. Come on, you know that. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, it's definitely a big move. Um, on Microsoft's part, and uh, I, I'm, I really hope that this pushes Sony into a corner to improve PS Now and to make it as competitive, as well as well, even they, getting well, even more studios. That, that new, that new service. What new service? Well, service. Or it was oh, like the, the, PS, was the, the, the PS Plus collection. Collection. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That, that's, that's what we were talking about earlier. Right. Yeah. And, but that's for PS4 games. That's not like revamping their service for next gen. Also, I find it I find it very insulting that they put Persona Five on there and not Persona Five Royal. That might be an Atlas thing though, but that's very insulting. That sounds like Atlas though. (laughs) All right, I think we're basically at the end. This probably went on a good hour and a half Mm -hmm. longer than we (laughs) intended. But does anyone have any closing thoughts? Um, I just wanted to touch buy bug snacks. Oh yeah, mm. my bug snacks. Uh, me and me and oh, by the way, his name is Ish. If anyone wanted to know, that's my boyfriend's name. Um, <laughs> Hello, Corey's boyfriend, like, who is also I known like as that Ish. Name. It's cute. Yeah, Ish. stands for Ishmael, but you know, Ish. no H. <laughs> but yeah, buy bug snacks. <laughs> Fuck I, J.K. Rowling. Oh my Fuck God. Fuck J.K. Yeah. Rowling and <laughs> exactly. buy bug yep. bug snacks. Buy bug snacks. Let's see, who um, else do I want to do? I already you just didn't came even to bring up bug snacks with the PlayStation exclusive. What the fuck? I I forgot. The one just okay, PlayStation hey, exclusive. Is I got it. this from the IGN list. You can well, also. IGN. I also want to. I also want to bring up the fact, and this is from your notes from the show notes, uh, Jose. Yep. Is that I have a theory about Resident Evil Eight, uh, real quick, and that's oh, uh, that dude, I can. That's a whole other stream. I know, but just really fast is my theory is that they're bringing back uh, the merchant. Well, yes. you do know that Netflix yeah. Portugal today leaked the fact there's another CGI movie coming out. Just posted like a minute, oh my a minute and fifty seconds of it, including the title screen. Oh my god! I and everyone's like, "What?" And it's Leon. <laughs> mm-hmm. So it's Leon and Claire. And the theory is that it takes place between seven and eight. Ooh. So we could get mm. eight. All right. <laughs> we we can go on forever about that. Yeah. Literally, right. Netflix Portugal just boom out of nowhere. Everyone and was he- like, what? <laughs> it's a new CGI movie. It's like, see, d- see what you did, Corey? <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Mm-hmm. Corey, do you not yeah. see my Discord name? All right. All right. Before, all right, uh, 
I have, I have, uh, I have, next time I have a good theory about the next switch. That's all. Okay. Okay. That's it. All right. Uh, <laughs> yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, I had a lot of fun doing this with you guys. Uh, it was really yeah. I, I have no solid plans throughout the future of this podcast will be, but I'd be <laughs> more than happy to have you guys on, whether it's permanent or uh, rotating chair. Uh, I'm tired. Me too. <laughs> Man, I have to work tomorrow. <laughs> I know. I got the next few I days off. I get a chance to run, to run my dailies in, um, in, a, in a world of Warcraft. With the little, with the pub. Prepare for tomorrow. It's going to be really, really hot tomorrow. So and Monday yeah. as well. So it's well, lucky, hey, right? Hey, shout out so. for everyone not using their yeah. fan because it, it's oh, hot right? in my room right now. Bro, <laughs> I wish. Uh, I have to shave. Damn it. <laughs> Damn societal norms. Uh, I, I I can't grow hair. I can't sympathize. <laughs> well, thank empathize. you, thank you for everyone for watching. By the way, thank you. You guys are yeah. awesome. Yeah. Thank you to the Th- five people for- who stuck around for literally three and a half hours. <laughs> we started. We started <laughs> off with like twelve. MVPs. We started off at there was like fourteen. There was fourteen people yeah. at one point. Yeah, y'all got the some MVPs there. though. Yeah, like, um, big big shout out to everyone that came great. out. Mm-hmm. Big shout out to the SDG. Ah, I messed up SDGC community. <laughs> and um, yeah, sorry about some of the technical snafus. My camera got overheated because I did not <laughs> use my uh, my fan. Well, but thankfully, I, I had a backup plan. Died. That's true. Just like Kingdom Hearts. No, leave us alone. Shut up. Shut up. And, and on that alone. note, uh, I will thank come you. to your house and beat your door down with my with key a keyblade. Yeah. With a <laughs> I will beat your door down, dude. All right. On that note, uh, I will stand out in front of your door and just blast face my beers for like ten hours. <laughs> I need to stop mentioning Kingdom Hearts, both in English mm-hmm. and in Japanese. <laughs> You All right. cannot hide from this. We will see you guys in the future at some point. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye. Right. Bye-bye. Hopefully I can talk over my Switch. <laughs>